Well, let's uh, begin with a weather update, everyone. It's muggy. I'm going to guess our American listeners are going to be like, what's muggy? How do you describe muggy? It feels like an Heavy? armpit. Yeah, it feels like you're living in an armpit. Yeah, mm. it's humid. Sometimes there's a breeze of wind and you're thankful for it. But for the most part, um, it is stanky. Frustrating weather. It's like the clouds are kind of pissed off. Yeah. Yes. And this is our um, sun for the summer. <laughs> this is our heat wave. <laughs> this, is, this is the good weather. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the best. Guys, um, were you aware that Beyblades weren't bullshit? Oh, yeah, they're real. Like, what do you mean not bullshit? As in they were real physical objects? As in they're real physical objects and there's like legit technique and builds and combinations to them. Yeah, didn't you watch the show? That's like the whole premise. The okay. cartoon. The cartoon didn't lie. Oh, I, I, okay, I guess it didn't. But I mean, I assumed that the cartoon was a lie. And that you would just buy these sets and pretend that it was working. Like like you'd buy a Pokeball and be like, there's a, po- a Pokemon inside. No, there's fucking not, you little liar. Beyblade is 100% real. It, and... Okay, this, yeah. so this is what I've learned. And I'm kind of shocked. Um, there's a big Beyblade community on TikTok. And I follow, or sorry, I follow this Beyblade TikToker. And for ages, he basically built the ultimate Beyblade and he kept trying to beat it. And he'd, like, explain what went into, like, these super specific parts and builds. And, like, there's one part where he, he's, like, look, he's like filming the Beyblade in, like, the little dish. And then, like, his phone pans over to the side for a second and it's his room. And his whole fucking carpet is, like, covered in Beyblades. Like, you cannot see anything under those Beyblades. Yeah, I think if you're into Beyblades in 2021, you are into Bla- Beyblades. Yeah, it's it was this dude's life. But he seems happy. You know, and he, he like he's getting like hundreds of thousands of views, which we won't all make, know. won't make you any money on TikTok. But like, it's the secret to happiness. Yeah, views. yeah, yeah. No, I, I think um, that's just, why that's why everyone with online followings is just super happy all the time. But John, you're always smiling. I love it. Yeah, uh, every single one of my subscribers, I a close personal friend. One million hooks clawed right into your back. Yeah. <laughs> what would your baby be? My what? Your Beyblade. Um, let's go for Crimson Sad Trout. That's pretty good. Yeah. I want like uh, I want it to be like a polar bear, and it leaves a trail of ice behind. That's oh, pretty that's good. Pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of got like an Arctic blue finish to it, with a bit of chrome around the edges. Mine's Set. called Window to Heaven, and I tape my gun to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, no, there, Neve, not again. There's nothing in the rule books that says no guns. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make that exception. Um, so I actually have a Beyblade story. Um, I'm 12 years older than my younger brother, and one time I walked into the living room and he was jumping up and down on the couch, dancing to the Beyblade theme tune, and he went, "No, get out, get out." <laughs> and uh that's all i have to say about that welcome to the let's fight a boss video game podcast the world's Strongest video game podcast to my left. They call him the Bladester. The Bay. Just that. B E Y. The Bay. It's Brian. Don't catch me sleeping. And to my right, with a record number of casualties coming out from her latest win at the Gunshots in the Air tournament, it's Neve. Hello. With you always, it's John. This is episode 141. That's fucked up. Uh, what Pokemon is Pokemon number 141? <laughs> okay, take your guesses because we oh, are bordering shit. on legendary right yeah, now. Yeah, I think we're bordering on legendary, but I don't think it's legendary. I'm going to say Kabuto. You think it's Kabuto. So you think it's a fossil Pokemon, yep. not one of the legendary yep. birds. Neve. I have don't... no fucking idea. I'm Googling Neve, this Neve, shit. It's cool. It's cool. You don't have to pretend you don't like Pokemon. Um, Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen. Always fucking Nido Queen. Nido Queen, Nido Queen, Nido fucking Queen. 
She's in the first 50 of the decks, as far, uh, as, far as I can remember. Just because it's the only Pokemon with um, canonical boobs, Neve. <laughs> Wait, you want to say Jinx now or something? Shit? <laughs> Don't say Jinx, Cam. We can't talk about Jinx. Here. Um, the dog, Suqueen. Suqueen. He's Stop Generation making, 2. Stop making shit. a Pokemon, Neve. <laughs> this is 151 original Pokemon, including me on this one. Which Pokemon is number 141 on the Pokedex? Just, okay, okay, Neve, no. it's easy. Just just take Mew and then minus 10. Okay. <laughs> I fucking no clue. Mew, come on. I'm just, Googling Neve, it. Put your phone down. Mew, put your phone down. Okay, Neve, I'll give you hints. A good guess would be one of the only flying and rock type. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Onyx. <laughs> Oh my what god! The fuck! It's it's like she's speaking a different fucking language he sometimes. He floats. He does not float. He's a giant snake. He literally his whole body touches the ground the entire time. Aerodactyl. Okay, then I will go with Ammonite. Okay, Pokedex. One four one. Kabutops. I was so close! This is why I am the greatest on this podcast! I am the strongest, the strongest member of the strongest podcast. Uh, I didn't get it right, though. I technically, nearly... you you guessed Kabuto, which is 140. Neve guessed Aerodactyl, which is 142. I did. So, um... We're both the best. <laughs> yeah. Well, technically, I'm, I'm the best, because this was my bit and my idea, and so... You know, well, all I, the I comedy don't, I don't that you're... I don't think it was a good bit at all. I feel like we're already all at 10. <laughs> if you're enjoying this I, comedy, I don't, you owe I, Brian. I don't know where this podcast goes from here. Like, what are we going to do? Talk about our fucking TV show? Like, it won't make any sense because we're all pissed off already. All the funny video game yuck yucks that you're hearing now. All these little bits that make you quiver in your jimmies. That's us. That's us making you laugh. So that it's easier to just get on with your day. You just, all of the, the nightmare and the pain that you feel every second, we will take it away for you a little bit for like an hour and a half every two weeks. We're not responsible for you, but we can make you laugh. Yeah. But you all are, you are all our very close personal friends. Yes. I know you individually, listener, like in parentheses. I met a... Uh... I met a fan for the first time in like a year recently. Oh, it was no. really weird and surreal. Was it good? Was it a good experience? I I thought so. Um, I was running. <laughs> uh, no, John, not one of these stories. No, no, no. They're, they're, although, although, I think I have mapped out the cruise zone on my run. Okay. I think I understand the stretch of road where it happens. Um, yeah, it's near the Wellington Monument. Uh, I... I, I don't have the geographical brain to confirm or deny that. There are a lot of bushes just south of the Wellington Monument. And Rebecca and I were walking through Phoenix Park the other day. And we saw a very happy couple running with vigor into the tall reeds yeah, of the yeah. bushes. I, I was going by there the other day and I saw two guys come out and just like separate waves. Like like a fucking Y. <laughs> oh dear. And then I was like, that's weird. We had a fight. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Okay. Um, I don't remember where the story was, but that was not the kind of this. This fan was just a nice fan, and um, we took a photo. And I was like, "I can take a photo with you, but we'd have to wear masks. So is there any point?" And he just goes, "Oh no." I thought that was kind of sweet, but yeah, that's my story. That's everything that's happened to me since the last podcast. Make sure to wear a mask. Make sure to wear a mask. Still, can't be too careful. Yeah. Yeah. Mask keep your identity hidden is that what the mask is for that is what it's for yeah <laughs> just just put on that mask and just commit as much crime as possible Neve, what's your favorite crime <laughs> i don't know like for me it's like torrenting stuff yeah probably torrenting <laughs> okay Neve. on a totally separate topic i recently watched promising young woman um what the, why um uh, so I, I i was like okay out of all the films that are nominated for an Oscar. This is the one I'm most curious about. She Have... has like uh, dyed hair in it, doesn't she? Yes. Or is that a wig? I'm sure that will be a popular costume when the world starts being a world again. <laughs> yeah. Um. <sighs> Have either of you seen it? I know. No. I know it stars Carrie Mulligan and Bo Birdman's Bo Burn Bo, Bo Burnham. Burnham. Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham is also in this, and yes. maybe some other actors too. Because, you know, you need multiple actors to make a film most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah, sometimes you don't. But, you know, 
Gen- um, you know, she's great. Movies. She's really good. She's like a really, really good lead. Um, I was super impressed with her. She's like got a lot of charisma, and I think you would really need it to pull off a role like that. Um, the film itself, like, do you, do you guys know what it's about? It's a revenge movie, isn't it? Kinda. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It's about this lady who, like, goes out to clubs and <sighs> pretends to be drunk, and then, like, creepy guys take her home, and then she's like, Boom, motherfucker, I'm not drunk! And I think there's maybe three or four scenes of that. I heard that she doesn't actually kill anyone. So it's kind of like a weak revenge movie? You see, this this is... Okay, this is kind of my problem with it. Oh, this is also, like, a very divisive movie for a bunch of reasons, and my feeling on it was that it's fine. Like, it's, it's grand. No, John, it's 2021. It's the internet. You can only like A or B. You cannot go for C. You cannot be lukewarm on something. You have to either fucking love it or fucking hate it. Okay. Um, only let's cycle that back and let's start from the... <laughs> The, 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 the beginning of this section. Okay. <clears throat> Guys, let me tell you about this piece of fucking shit I saw. Just the fucking most garbage, fucking useless film ever. I want to say, anyone who likes this film, fuck you. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounds like such a real YouTube video. <laughs> and if you think this film is good... Take a look in the mirror at the fucking idiot staring back at you. <laughs> it's 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 like all right, it's fine. Um, it really reminded me of like a less fucked up hard candy. And whatever you want to say about hard candy, I feel like they went for it that movie, and I think that is an ugly, angry movie in a way like it needs to be. Like yeah. I think it gives that movie power. I felt like this film lacked that power, you know, where it was like, like she, she literally, like she goes home with these guys and then she's like, boo, I'm not drunk. And it, they're like, whoa, whoa. And that's kind of it. I think her performance does carry it a lot because she is amazing in it. Like she's really, really good. Carrie Mulligan is kind of just brilliant yeah, in she general. Is. She's she should be good. in more stuff. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a part where she spits in someone's coffee and she makes it like the most just charming, irresistible thing ever. Like, she's fucking brilliant. So, you know, she ha- like she has her reasons for, like, doing this stuff. Then she... But then she meets... And she, you know, she doesn't like the, all these creepy dudes, which is fair. But then she meets Bo Burnham, who's a nice, a nice boy. And she, like, gets, like, romantically involved with him and, like, stops doing the stuff she's doing. And then... Um, then like there's a few twists and turns and I have heard people describe this movie and be like oh wow like it just went some really unexpected places for me like as you both know I'm incredibly incredibly intelligent just so fucking smart tall in, brain I, what'd you say tall brain that's yeah. that's what Neve always says whenever I say something smart he's, he's a very long forehead yeah uh yeah <laughs> but yeah like it was just it was one of those movies where I, I just knew where it was going the entire time, and it was like, okay, let's let's get to this twist. Is the nice guy not so nice? Well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything. But um, that's a really sub, uh, yeah, you know, to really subvert the expectations. That's really clever. Okay, like and like, it's not, it's not as simple as like, oh, he's like a super evil predator person. Like, it's a little, little bit subtler than that. But um, I was just kind of watching it and being like, well, yeah, like what, what other way can this film go? Like, they're, like we're forty minutes in. It's not just going to be them fucking pissing around in a bubble bath for the next hour. Um, and yeah, and then like you know, it ends, and like I can see what they're going for with the end. But then I don't know, like the ending, the ending, like in a weird way, kind of wrapped around and felt like a little bit misogynistic to me. And I didn't feel that way when I was watching it, but then the more I thought about it, the more I felt like it started to feel that way. And I don't know, it was... it was fine. Like, I'd say, like, I don't know if this would be the kind of film I'd put up for an Oscar, but I mean, what the fuck are the Oscars? Like, whatever, but, um... Yeah, like, it's... it's grand. I think... it's... it's quite toothless in a lot of ways, and I don't... If it's gonna tackle a subject matter as heavy as it's tackling, I would rather it have teeth. Yeah, yeah. 
which, by the way, is a better one of those movies. Teeth is very good. Yeah, nice. that was teeth really is good. teeth is a wild time. Yeah, I, I have. I still have never seen it. <laughs> it's I, so much fun. Yeah. I have it on DVD. <laughs> I will give it to you. <laughs> Me owning a copy of Teeth is maybe the least surprising thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, what do you got, Woody? You're up to the plate. I've Here been... comes the pitch. It's time. Swish. For, time for a home home run. A big. A, a big baseball, everybody. A big baseball, everybody. Uh, that's uh, let's go, let's go ball, let's go Chargers. Yeehaw to America! Who's your favorite baseball player? Uh, Michael Jordan. I like um, Rodney Thundersnatch. <laughs> Jeremy Gum. <laughs> Is that, a, is that a real person? I have no fucking <laughs> could you, Could you, could you say the surname of Gum? Gum. Oh. <laughs> Neve, do your Jeremy Gum impression. I'm Jeremy Gum. <laughs> it's like he's here. <laughs> and I love baseball. <laughs> Ever since I was a little boy and the baseball mitt was in my hand and I had to, to troll and play fetch with old, with, a, with, with old man Robinson <laughs> and mama was there and she was like, someday when you grow up, you'll be a bigger ball, but now you're a small ball. It's time to gum up the works. <laughs> His <laughs> famous saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make sure you swallow your chewing tobacco <laughs> and make sure you've got 10 restaurants named after you in this state. Don't you try and chew me out. Gums Gumbo. Gums Gumbo. I'm 15 years old, <laughs> which is like 100 years old in baseball. It's You run around, but it's not quite a circle. It's more like a square. It's like cricket, but, you know, it's not. Uh, just to say, everyone, we're probably going to continue this bit for the entirety of the episode. So if this isn't working for you, uh, I'd, I'd just probably I'd, I'd cut your losses on yeah. this one. Do you like baseball? Don't listen to this show. <laughs> like, do not. Have you ever watched any baseball? Uh, I watched in a league of their own, which is the women's baseball league movie. <laughs> oh, I watched Moneyball, but that's more about the statistics. Yeah, I've watched movies about baseball, but nah, I wouldn't fucking I think, watch that. I think, I think the closest I've watched is like Field of Dreams. Hey, that movie's real yeah. good. I don't remember it. It's got Kevin Costner in it. Like he will die for your sins. God bless. What is it? Say. Jesus or something? Sure. Does Jesus play baseball? Jesus and America are like the same thing, and so baseball is like the like catalyst for oh, that. No argument here. Um, Brian. Yes. How's media? Media. The media I was consuming is uh, an audio book slash physical book, but I'm listening to it with my ears and not my eyes. It's Press Reset, which is the second book by Jason Schreier, and it's a collection of essays about video game development, but more about the anticlimax of these developments and how studios just sort of fizzle out and then the burnout from staff and how there isn't really a lot of senior d video game developer developers and how it's kind of a young man's game and you burn out and you kind of just walk away from it there so, were so many parallels to the animation industry in this yes. yeah uh it definitely feels like well i guess with video games it's similar to animation that yeah it's a creative industry where you are Breathing life into inanimate and, and, and yeah, you know, stuff that it's isn't a passion fueled industry by people who really want to do it for people who want to make a lot of money from it. Absolutely. It's a very young industry as well. Uh, animation in America. I think there's unions in Hollywood and maybe maybe Georgia in Atlanta. I'm not sure. But there, there's, there's a few kind of capital uh, hubs in America for animation, Western animation. Uh, but I think with video games, it's just sort of, it's very motivated by a boardroom. Mm -hmm. And I'm only a few chapters into this book, but so far all the case studies have been incredibly harrowing, but also relatable, and they all kind of read as cautionary tales. And you you uh, get the happy endings where you get the game developer who works with a big game company, gets, gets a bad taste in her mouth, and then becomes an indie game developer, but only a small portion of them are successful. What what I kind of thought was fucked up was like there were so many stories about like these indie games from these like really talented people who poured their whole lives into them. And I'd never heard of them. Never heard of any of these games. And like, I guess like you assume that like, you know, especially the three of us doing what we do and like, you know, the amount of time we spend reading like games, news and stuff. You'd imagine you'd hear about them. But yeah. it, it's fucked up to think how many indie games must come into existence and just, like, 
just disappear without like anyone noticing them. It's That's tough. my super cheery thought for today. It, it is. <laughs> it's a very positive thought. Yeah. Um, we keep it posy. What was his first book again? Uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pickles. Uh, Pixels. Blood, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pickles. Blood, <laughs> Pickles. Blood, 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 Sweat, and Pickles. Blood, Sweat, and Pickles. The year was 1847, and the old pickle war had started up. We used to use them as baseball bats, but then we realized that if we ate the baseball bat, you could just call it a pickle. And the smaller, more spherical ones, they weren't the balls anymore. They were just little pickles. Later, we named them tomatoes. <laughs> And that's how America was born. <laughs> Video games are quite similar to uh, baseball pickles. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I, I'm only a small way through this. It's kind of the thing where like, I'm either super into like listening to it. And I'm like, alright, lay some really awful shit on me. I want to hear about how video games are made. And then other times I'm like, look, I'm having a tough day at work and I'm seeing parallels. And like, I, I, I like my job in animation. I'm very happy in it and I'm thankful for the projects I'm on, but like, there's so many like bad days you could have in a year, and you're just like, mm. yeah. I had one of them recently, so I did have to take a break from the book. Yeah, it's good. I think my favorite story in it was the Epic Mickey story with with Warren Spector. Is, yeah, yeah, that, that, that that's was a really all good story. Super, super like interesting, and the stories after that are good too. But um, some of the productions I like wasn't as familiar with, but like it, it was all really entertaining and like jason schreier's other book is is really good as well yeah he's a really good uh he's really good at collecting stories um i really like him as a journalist as well he's very cheeky on twitter i've noticed that but he's that's very kind of, cheeky but like but like his thing is that like if you talk shit you get hit yeah and like he is very good at a clap back he describes himself as a sneak fuck <laughs> he's not wrong no i guess not uh but yeah i'll i'll read anything he writes because it's always very entertaining yeah yeah, for sure. Um... Neef? Neef? <laughs> I know my my section of the media log is not particularly nice looking. I just have an asterisk that says Richard Stanley is an abuser. Yeah, we didn't know this. <laughs> um, nope. Yeah, so last episode I spoke very highly about a movie called Color Out of Space. And I really like that movie. <laughs> seemingly this year like literally march it was revealed that richard stanley the director of it is just a horrible abuser his uh ex-wife i think it was wrote a really long piece about the emotional abuse she went in um true um at the hands of richard stanley and thankfully he was removed from all the future projects so that's that's the good side of this but i just wanted to say it because i was really like like this movie's great everyone go watch it and i think it's like important to mention that aspect of it as well because this happened super recently and i just didn't know yeah uh, like i don't think that's the first time that's happened on this podcast oh, no. and i don't think it will be the last because we cannot know all discourse all the time yeah. no oh for, like it's for just, real it, it is it is impossible yeah we're, we're probably not going to do like a whole thing of corrections but we like please do let us know if we like yeah, that's just goof. Yeah, because one it's I also, specifically it's also to the do. kind yeah. of stuff where, like, we we do want to know. And yeah. if we're talking about someone and they have a kind of fucked up past or, like, you know, they're an abuser or a predator or whatever, we probably wouldn't be talking about them in the same way if we knew that that's what they are. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, like, from what I saw, people were, people were cool about it and people were cool in their corrections. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. It's just made me sad because I was such a fan of the movie and I was just like, oh. Yeah, I was getting all pumped up to watch it yeah. and I saw that comment. Yeah, I've got it ready like... to go. Um, I, I guess what the thing with that is that director is only a director. Movies are made by a team. Director only tells yeah. the team what to do. And I'm sure there's a, a, an entirety. This is a huge yeah. passion project a, a huge from a of bunch of people who really wanted to make this. And once, like, Elijah Wood's involved? I don't know. Oh, yeah, he loves horror movies. <laughs> but once they uh, found out about this, he was cut straight away. So I'm looking forward to the next one in the trilogy. And if you guys want to watch it, I still think you should watch it. Maybe torrent it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just wanted to put that out there. Other than that, I watched Creed. Oh, I love Creed. Again. Um, when I'm sad, I like to watch the Rocky movies a lot. And I've been thinking about Rocky a lot lately. Oh, they're so, so good. They're I don't so think good. I've ever watched anything except the first one. He has oh. a robot butler and in the one club, of them. The Clubber Lang one. Which one's that? That's Mr. T. That's 
four? I think I think it's I, three or four. I, I think it might three. be three because I think one is Apollo, mm-hmm. two is the rematch with Apollo, three is Clubber Lang, four is Dragonov. Draco. Rocky Tree has Clubber Lang in it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the one where Rocky fights Hulk Hogan. Yeah. I always remember that one because Rocky and Apollo are friends, and I yeah. think that's super cute. And They're Apollo very... trains Rocky. Yeah, that's so cool. Rocky Four is on with Dolph Lundgren, and Bridget Nielsen's also in it. But mm-hmm. then they're also in Creed Two, which I think is and pretty Rocky cool. And Rocky Five is where he raises an evil Rocky. <laughs> and then Rocky Six is called then... Rocky Balboa, in which he owns a, t- yeah. a steak restaurant. Yeah. In Rocky Five, he, yeah, he he takes in a street kid, and then the street kid turns evil. And they have a fight in the streets, I think is what happens. I think Rocky V is probably the weakest. Yeah, one. yeah, I think so. I think I've actually, actually, I think I have seen a lot of them. But And then in Rocky VI, the new world champion runs a computer program that says that Rocky yes. was better <laughs> than him. Is that what happens? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay so Rocky IV features Polly's Robot. Uh, Polly's Robot was a gift from Rocky Balboa to Polly Penino on his birthday. And yeah, it's a little robot butler. And I know in the first Rocky movie, he has a pet turtle, and that turtle is still alive today. And wow. owned by Sylvester Stallone. I was at the zoo recently. We were all at the zoo recently. Yes, we yeah. were. Dublin Zoo opened back up. Hell so yeah. Everyone Those turtles are like 150 years old. Wow. They'll yeah. probably outlive us. Yeah, because it's crazy. When you, when you go outside the zoo, they're celebrating 190 years, and you're like, yeah? But then you see the photos and you're like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah it's just like children on an elephant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're and like, like, uh-oh. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you see like that and are like, we don't do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, we, but it was the style at the time. Here's a child punching a red panda. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Dublin Zoo's lovely. I it's love a it. great zoo. Uh, I, I, I like how much conservation shit it does. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, I, for sure. I've been to zoos all over the world and... Irish zoos are some of the best. When yeah. you when you when you get to like a bad zoo, and the animals are like sad, it's not it's not good. I went to a zoo in Japan uh, in Okashira Park, and they have an Asian elephant, and she just walks back and forth on a concrete slab. It was very <gasps> no. upsetting. Like I I, I I just went in there for the guinea pig petting zoo, but the further you go back, they still have the same size cages, but the animals just get bigger, and it's just it's wrong. American pet shops kind of fuck me up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We do not have that here. No, you cannot do that here. Yeah, you cannot buy, like, dogs and cats in a pet shop that's, like, super fucked. And you need a license as well. Mm-hmm. Can, we, can we make an aside about America? Because I feel like we've already kind of shit talk America a lot this episode. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, a while ago on the podcast, I think I made a statement about how American chocolate is bad. That was me. Someone was super mad at me for it because I said... I, 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 it could have been you. I have definitely talked about yeah. how Hershey's is fucking shit because I'm very passionate about yeah, this. Yeah, Hershey's tastes like ass. So this is the thing. If you're American and that upsets you, you shouldn't be mad at me or Neve. You should be mad at fucking Hershey's because that is the most garbage chocolate in the entire fucking world. It's not chocolate. It's brown candy. Okay? I'm, I'm trying to wake you up. Me, me, and, me and Neve... We're fucking Morpheus. You're you're yeah. Neo. You're trapped in the tub. And we're trying to yank you out. And you're trying to put the fucking cables back in your neck. That's what's happening right mm-hmm. now. Let us give you some Lily O'Briens. Just eat it. Just eat the good it. chocolate. Oh man, Lily O'Briens is so good. It's so good. Uh, me, I'm Cypher. Because uh, ignorance is bliss. Oh, don't Whoa. be Cypher, Brian. Don't be Cypher. <laughs> I'm going to betray the no. Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to fucking send you down Brian. the river with the agents. Cypher f- no. is so cool. Joe Pantaleano, no, he's, he's the best. Not. So, okay, if <laughs> he's got his little, like, like Brian, goatee. I love the Matrix. Cypher is my favorite character. Cypher's no. so bold. <laughs> no, my favorite is but a Brian, cocker mouse. So, yeah. you, Brian, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, like, be psyched to eat a bar of Hershey's. I, I I would eat one, but I'd be like, "Is there dairy milk?" I bet you'd be psyched if it was like fifty percent off. Oh yeah, yeah, that'll do it. It's a saving. Mm-hmm. That's a small fortune, Neve. <laughs> Don't make that face. Okay, so you, you know you know how there was that meme going around of like the really like emotive face of Aloy, just kind of looking confused and disgusted. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of times Neve makes that face when John and I are shiting on about some bullshit. Oh, that Twitter discourse was annoying. So, so did they use a face app filter to make her look, you know... No, she just, like, it, it was a Someone still re- It was a still from, like, a trailer with flat lighting, and they were like, she's fat now, fat and ugly. <laughs> I can't jack off to this. Uh, she, <laughs> should, she should like like this, and it was, like, a really, like, over 
Joe on like Sephora white tea bleached yeah, yeah. like lady who was a ma- the OP who made that made it as a joke. <laughs> they were like, here I met a non political Aloy. Oh god, never mind. Twitter sucks. The fucking internet sucks. <laughs> I, I just I thought the face was very funny because I was like, that's a really good like game engine capture face. Yeah, it looks like a real person. <laughs> yeah, just the amount and they're of like, bewilderment. Ew, real people. <laughs> <laughs> reality oh. I like Aloy she's alright that game is fine but yeah. Aloy's cool yeah she's in I have she's not played fine. it I, she mean, looks I cool. will eventually still, I still so uh, we, I'd say this every time we bring this up I'm still so shocked that you've never played that I game I know I saw yeah. the trailer for the new one and I know what bothers me about it it just doesn't the environments just look super fake that's, that's it it's so polished that it lacks any character yeah it looks like kind of an art station Wabi concept Sabi. art yeah it's kind yeah. of a place wabi sabi, like, it, it, what's it, it, wabi sabi? Beauty through imperfection. It's the, like you don't watch King of the Hill. The the the, uh, the uh, thing with the uh, filling in the cracks with the gold. Oh, okay. Beauty through flaws. Yes. Knee of Creed. Oh yeah, I was watching Creed because I was really sad, and I guess I'm going to bring it up because a few people know through the Discord and just social media. My dog Piper uh, passed away, and I've just been very upset about it she was like my best friend who was with me at all times so i've really been missing her and i'm just like gravitating towards any comfort media and for some reason i just love the rocky movies i love them all you love them because they're great i love them because they're great and i think rocky is like just a sweet guy like i think his relationship with adrian is lovely like it's really cute and he's, he's this he's the italian stallion he's such yeah. a good fighter yeah. and, and but he's so he's so he's well. so gentle and nice with her i don't know i have just this real soft spot for italian americans <laughs> mamma mia <laughs> but, um, bada bing yeah sure uh but i like creed uh, creed is great i like michael b jordan and the first one is fantastic and it's just rocky being that mentor for uh, Apollo Creed's son and just good time. Good, it's a good time. Good time. Do you know what I really like in that film is the fake song that Tessa Thompson has that's called yeah. Grip. And I was like, is that a real song? Because that sounds like... A, and I was like, I was looking for eight people and other people are like, is this a real song? Because it sounds like a real song. Tessa Thompson. She's great as well. Fantastic. Not, and I honestly have not much to say other that's than right. they're extremely great comfort movies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I really like that one bit where it's all done in one take, the boxing match, and yeah. the camera pans around, like circling the match over and over. The third one's going to be out this year, I guess, if it makes its cinema date. I've heard that. I've heard Sylvester Stallone isn't going to be in this one. He wasn't meant to be in the second mm. in, in Creed Two, but in Creed Three, it's it's Michael B. Jordan. Creed Two is only okay. Yeah, it's it's not as good. So Creed Creed One is like he comes back and all that. What's like the hook with Creed Two? He fights Drago's son. Yeah. Really? Okay, I was gonna make that as a joke. No. No, no. <laughs> it's Rocky. Like, honestly, yeah, okay. yeah. No, John, it's Rocky. Like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a paint by numbers film. They're mm-hmm. fantastic. They're just, yeah. They, they they are comfort films. Absolutely. It's just nice to see someone like I guess the whole point is rising above it, and I know it's like true people hitting each other, but that's the best way to rise above it. And even <laughs> yeah. been saying it for years. Maybe John's right sometimes. There you go, okay. John. Well, we'll move on to something else in a second. But yeah, and you know, I was sorry to hear about Piper Neve. And you know, we have a little Piper emo in the Discord, and we want people to use that because she was, she was a part of this podcast, and like we all really miss her. She's such a sweet. Dog. I love seeing that emo. It doesn't make me sad. It makes me very happy to see Poggers Piper yeah. pop up in the chat. She is hype as totally. fuck. Neve said something to me in the last couple of weeks that really fucked me up and I can't stop thinking about it. What? <laughs> you agreed with me on something and I said, see Neve, I'm right sometimes. And you were like, I actually agree with you like a fair amount, but it's just more fun to say I don't on the podcast. <laughs> oh, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, the, the most of the stuff I say is just to be annoying. She's a contrarian. She said it yeah. at the, she, she's introduced herself as one. I don't actually want to play a game called, like, Sister is a Tale of Two Daughters. That sounds shit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it! I, I, oh. I'd play it. I'd give it a go. Speaking of movies about fighting, me and Brian watch Fight Club. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, my God. That movie is... It came out in 99, so it's 22 years old. I love watching that movie every five years because there's always, like, a new like aspect your, to it. your perspective of it just changes so much in the span of five yeah, years like i think the last time we watched it obama was still president in america <laughs> and so like that's like you can measure it by american presidents because the because the one before that was when bush was the president because it's a very american film and it's about like 
I guess like I I I, I um the best summary of that film was the time I watched it with my dad in like the mid two thousands, and my dad was like, do you, "Do you know Do you know why supermarkets employ people over the age of fifty? And I was like, "Why?" And he's like, "Because they're not going to try and get into the managerial positions." That's what Fight Club's about, and I was like, "What the fuck does he mean?" <laughs> I don't think that's what it's about. No, uh, I, it, it's just something that latched onto him, where he was like, "Look, you just settle down." I think like I've watched Fight Club three times, and I think when I first watched it, I was full on like, "Yeah, man, yeah, break the system." <laughs> and I think now I'm on like the complete other end of the spectrum, where I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> these aren't meant to be relatable at all it's written like the book is written by a gay man who was like look this is me supposed to be taking the piss out of this and people started believing the shit that Tyler was saying well and- like watching it now I don't know how you could be like he's right but- he's very sexy which is oh my fucking oh, is- <laughs> there, 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 there's yeah. one bit where you get to see like his groin like cause it, the camera but even just the fucking like just the swagger of him when he has like the fur coat and the beanie and the mm-hmm. sun. Yeah. Holy shit! And his lips Pete are so pouty. Brad Pitt is oh. like the hottest man. Unbelievable! Yeah. Like like some kind of beautiful hell demon. You could cook like steak, eggs, the whole fucking the whole breakfast on that chest. Yeah, <laughs> you've got very close to. No, I'm not gonna say that. Uh, what are you not gonna say, Neve? <laughs> just say it, and you. Can, you know, can... Colin Farrell's sex tape. <laughs> It's like me breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, hang on, hang on. I'm I'm hearing a lot of things I don't understand. Uh, Go on, Eve. No, that was just never mind. Okay, yeah, it, maybe Brian just is... brought back a like forbidden Colin Farrell sex tape memory. Uh, We're not calling this episode forbidden sex tape memory. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, I mean, I still really enjoy that movie. I think it's a really interesting movie. I think it's super, super of its time. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, could, you could make that movie now. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but Maggie Mayfish did a very, very good essay on it. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. a very funny video. She's great. Everything they say about fighting is true, though. Yeah. That's that's the only part of that fill-up where I'm like, yeah. Oh, also, I watched Cruella. I don't really have anything to say on it, though. Well, I guess... When the trailers were out, people were making the joke that they were like, haha, this is Joker for girls. Yeah. It kind of is. Really? <laughs> that makes me want to watch it. It's so boring. Everyone and- else made the joke that her parents die by Dalmatian. Is I made that joke. Is that true, Brian? Yes. And it's, it's not even like a twist. It happens in the first like two minutes of the movie. Are you serious? Her, her, her mom yeah. gets yeeted off a cliff by a pack of Dalmatians. This sounds fucking amazing. No, you'd think so, wouldn't it? It's not. And like... It's barely about like fashion or anything. Like I thought it would be way more fashion oriented. Like like there there are a couple of like showing up to paparazzi with the red carpet and doing like a ta da with your dress. Those bits are good, but I thought there'd be way more of that. You don't really believe that Corella's into fashion. Oh, that's it, fucked up. And you don't understand her motivations and they wreck on a bunch of stuff. And so she's the same age as Roger and Anita. That's wrong. She's Be- older than them. She's about she? 20, 30 yeah. years her senior because in, uh, like, canon, my 101 Dalmatians, <laughs> Anita works for Corella, but she's, you know, a junior staff member, whereas Corella be the... And they date sure. behind the scenes. Anyway. That's my headcanon, right? So, so in this, uh, Anita's played by uh, the woman who's in the later seasons of the, of the Good Place, who I thought was Australian, but she's actually English. The one that Chidi dates for a while. And she runs a, a dream thing. Or uh, no, does she? Uh, anyway. Mm. She plays Anita, but it turns out her full name is Anita Darling. Oh, okay. So when yeah. people say Anita Darling, they're yeah. actually saying her full name. And also... Um, is, that a, is that an amazing Good Place joke? No, that's a that's a, a Corella joke. Mm-hmm. Oh! This sounds like Solo. Where they... <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and, and as well, as well... Um, Roger then is played by, play by Nandor the Relentless from what we do in the Shadows, the TV the adaptation. <laughs> and uh, Jasper and Horace are also the same age as Corella, and they all grew up together as street urchins and are known pickpockets. This is the kind of backstory I want for these characters. Uh, yeah. It's not a good film. Do um, Jafar next. Oh, if they fucking touch my Jafar, <laughs> I'm going to, like, that is the hill I'm going to die on. He's best friends with a bird. What else do you need to know about him? Uh, him and that bird fucking love each other. Cause yeah, that but one where bit... did he find the bird? Because you know how does yeah, a bit... Brian, with the, the bird, where'd it come from? 
they, they've always known each other because because you know there's that bit with Iago and he's like clearing up the place he's like should we should we hang on to this picture I don't know I'm making a face in it <laughs> there's, there's a lot to unpack what what about a movie called like Scar in Space it's probably the likely it's it's, it's where he would end up because mm. we don't really know what happens to Scar do we he dies he fucking Brian. dies yeah but he's dead but yeah but maybe the hyenas ate him yeah but maybe the hyenas put him up in the space we don't know Oh, that's a good point. You can't can't fault him, do you? Like, cause no. cause see what happens is the hyena's jumping him, but it's done all over a cast shadow. So maybe they were putting an astronaut suit onto him. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> and then they were like, "All right, start the counter." We were talking about Corella. Fuck that film. Okay. Also, Corella isn't even like the fun kind of bad movie. It's just bad. It's just Aww. boring. Yeah, I I wish I wish it was like a drinking game or something. Like there's. Like I, I was not paying attention to this. That's, film. How, that's how I felt about the Lion King movie, where I was like, I can't even have like an interesting opinion on this movie. It's just, it's just not good. Yeah, yeah. It's another film starring Emma Stone, and Emma Stone is either in fantastic movies or just real duds. When I heard that she was playing it, I was like, oh, cool. She's great casting, and and she she has got a bit of a deep voice anyway, so she does the, she like she she really evokes. Cruella mm. and I think uh, Glenn Close was a producer on this film so it's got her blessing because that's important because you know Glenn is very very important I feel like Emma Stone has been in kind of bad things she was in La La Land she's in this bad. film <laughs> she's, she's in this film directed by Cameron Crowe in which she plays uh, an Asian woman but she didn't Ooh. know she was an Asian woman because it's based on a book and then they were like, you know that the character you're playing in the book was Asian? She was like, oh, no, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Absolutely no research on this <laughs> no, before no. I said yes. I can't remember the name of that. I'm sure, I'm sure someone... Yeah, oh, and, and, and she's in The Help, which is yeah. a movie. Emma Stone should be in better movies. Because she's in The Favourite and she's in, in Superbad. I, yeah. I love both of those is films. Is she in... The Favourite is the best Sleeping movie she's been Dogs? in. Sleeping Dogs? Is that someone else? She's in Sleeping Dogs? She okay. is, yeah, you're right. Yeah, before she was like super famous, she's... she's she, she was, she was, she was right on the cusp because I remember Sleeping Dogs was coming she had out. She Zombie Land. Like, it was like, really? Yeah. Her? Like, that was that was what that felt like. But yeah. So, Brian, I'm hearing great things here. Yeah, no. Everyone should watch it. Uh, watch Scar in Space. Uh, he leaves a big scar in the moon. Uh, it's my headcanon now. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys have any more headcanons to share before we uh, talk about video games? Um, what I was going to try and make a joke about the bad guy from Sleeping Beauty, but that is literally already a movie. Maleficent? Yeah, there's two um, of them. Jafar yeah. has a sex tape. That's my head. <laughs> and he makes breakfast in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a date with Jafar, but he's holding like loads of dates. Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Fan art, please. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would uncurl that chin strap beard. You know what I'd like fan art of? Do you think it makes like a noise? Or do you think it makes that noise like the door? Boing. Boing. <laughs> Sorry, John. Do, do you know what I'd like fan art of? What would you Strategy like? talk. Oh. Happy pride. Yeah. Simba's pride. <laughs> See how I brought it back to the Lion King. <laughs> oh, I played uh, Virtua Fighter Five. Are you guys excited to hear me talk about this? Like, I, I also played this game. Really? Yeah. Okay, you talk about it because you oh. know what I'm going to say. Okay, so my opinion on Virtua Fighter Five was I played it for an hour and I played as Akira, and the way you play as Akira is you just press triangle a whole bunch and then you win. And. The other thing I have to say about Virtua... Okay, so John's making a new face at the moment. <laughs> um, the other thing I think about Virtua Fighter 5 is that it looks great. I think it's super lame that they're charging 10 euro for the uh, low poly uh, costume DLC, which is fine. what the people want. And I think to me, it looks like the kind of video game that would be in a television show or movie in which fictional characters are playing a fictional game. Like, you know how in Russian Doll, there's like a All made the characters game? are yeah. very generic. Yes. Yeah. Like, you've got old Karate Man. He's there with the big long beard. How much is this? It's free. Oh. It's part of PS Plus. Okay, See, that's why I'm like, at yeah. least for now, okay with the 10 euro DLC. Because I really want to support Virtua Fighter because I love Virtua Fighter. But 
I would be pissed if I paid 30 euro for this and then had to pay 10 euro for the DLC like people would. Because if you're downloading this, you kind of need that DLC, not just because it has like the old character models, which look fucking great. Yeah, they do. But um, also it has like all the costume parts as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really happy that this exists because for a long while, Virtua Fighter characters have only existed as Dead or Alive downloadable characters. And that's really sad because Dead or Alive... um, was like, I don't know if it used the same engine, but Dead or Alive's fighting system was very, very similar to Virtua Fighters in the point that it kind of seems based off it. But this is a cool game, and I'm really, really happy it's out. I'm sad that the single player is not there, but um, I learned something really cool about it today. There's a girl in it called Vanessa, and oh, she's uh, like... Vanessa's amazing. Vanessa's fucking brilliant. Yeah. Do you know who does Vanessa's motion capture? Asuka. That's Sorry cool. I ruined it for you. No, it's okay. And Seemingly, she does the motion capture for a few characters. That's fucking. Uh, there. That's really cool. Oscar is just the most amazing person. She's like, she has her own graphic design company. I think she was a hairdresser for a little bit. She's just the best. And WWE should use her better. Can I see that picture of Vanessa Prime? Yeah. Yeah, she looks cool. She's really. She's cool. really cool, and she she she's wearing her outfit, and it's really cool, and she's my <laughs> friend. Yeah, she's not wearing top. So. I'm just pointing it out. Can we put her in the thumbnail, please? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'll do. <laughs> Sometimes with Neve, I can't tell if she's like, this is stupid or this is, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, she likes girls, so. Yeah, it's, conf- I do. it's confusing. I mean, big need a queen fan over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have that much to say about it. Like, I love Virtua Fighter. And like, Brian, you're right. It's really generic, but... That's fun. That's kind of become, like, an in-joke with the fans. One of my favorite, like, Virtua Fighter memes ever was Akira, the main guy. It was, like, they did his profile. Like, you know, like, you see those fighting game profiles where it's, like, name, age, blood type, and everything. And it's just, like, name, Akira, age, karate, blood type, <laughs> karate, likes karate. Because like, that's his entire character. But he's kind of great for that reason. And then, like, yeah, they're... they're it's like Virtua Fighter is like a less goofy version of Tekken, which takes itself way more seriously and is also kind of goofy because of that. And I love it. And people people should give it a shot because like these characters, they're so much fun. There's a there's a, a mean goth man called Go who throws people. He's very good. I like Go a lot. I spent a lot of time playing as Go in my early days. Um, I'm disappointed that there is no single player option because Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution had like the best fighting game single player option ever and you know some of us don't want to get good at it some of us just want to play a couple of matches draw some fan art and call it a day I do really like the arcade mode final boss and it's that weird like chrome Dural. Yeah. and you go into like the factory and it just sort of like like a hatch opens up and it just flies down Yep. is he like a Mokujin type where he copies other people's moves Eve, it's a she oh she well, is fuck a me. <laughs> she, oh. a bald silver android like a cool. chrome naked woman comes down and she is just ready ready for you and she will only like attack you like three or four times in the match but it'll like take like a quarter of your health down okay she's so cool. strong yep and when she wins she screams unbirth <laughs> what was your what's your favorite 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 your fact brian um, that she may or may not be my mom. That her, her her actual story in the game is that she is the mother of a Kage, which, uh, you know, it's been pretty interesting. That's cool, John. Um, <laughs> so one other thing I wanted to say about this game is that I was a bit disappointed by the sound design. It's like the same punch sound effect and the same like block sound effect, but I guess that's kind of part of the charm as well. Big time. I think, I think like... Virtua Fighter has sounded like that for a very, very long time. And it's totally fair for you to be like, I don't like it, but I also wouldn't change it. You know what I mean? Like, what would you change it to? Yeah. Yeah. Brian. Mm Mm-hmm. Why don't you tell us about Biomutant? Biomutant is a game that came out like a week ago now. Uh, I don't own this game anymore. I I ditched that shit. (laughs) Um, no, I, okay, I feel I, like I feel like this has been like the discourse around Biomutant. I feel like yeah. everyone everyone was so hyped for this game, and then a week later, it's kind of a smoking crater. Okay, yeah. so the reviews came out, yeah. and I saw people being like, "No, no, 
oh <laughs> and then they got it and then they're like oh oh I, I was very disappointed by this game and i knew the longer i held on to it the more it was gonna or the less it was gonna be worth so i i i i, I flipped it before you know it devalued too quickly this is a open world semi role-playing game in which you play as a bio mutant and the human race has gone they've left earth and in its place have taken oh like the title of the game yeah are, are basically like a cross between like <laughs> rocket raccoon and like a gremlin or like and like a mogwai and i think it's kind of ugly well, it's, it's, it's completely yeah. customized by what you can make it look, although they have to have the eye patch. I okay. think, like, your stats also affect its build. Like, if you go right. for a okay. fighter, it gets bigger. Yeah, it's got a big body, tiny head, mm -hmm. or you can be uh, you can be very good at negotiating and you have a big head. Uh, my my Biomutant... Okay, uh, bef before I get into the game, it is maybe a Swedish game developer called Experiment 101. They have less than 20 staff, and what made me want to get this game was, okay, it's me, it's, it's a first-time, brand-new IP made by uh, a relatively small European game developer. And I think, I think like, it's fair to say that no matter what else... like I, I watched Brian play a fair, fair bit of this game. Like, talented stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like, very impressive thing for a small number of people to produce. Yeah. The game is published by THQ Nordic. I don't think they're very good at their job. Oh, they did a really good uh, AMA on 8chan. They did, didn't they? Yeah. Um, their PR skills are very poor and... <laughs> I find a lot with THQ as a publisher, <laughs> they'll always sandbag the developer on their box art. Like, for example, Astro Boy on Game Boy Advance. This is a big pet peeve. This is very specific. Astro Boy in the Game Boy Advance is, is developed by Treasure Games, but it was published by THQ. I think this might be a different THQ. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. But when I see those three letters, red flag. Not a fan of THQ. They made, they made No Mercy. And they also made Saints Row. But they publish No Mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brian, how, how, are you, how are you liking Biomutant? Not much. Um, <laughs> the reviews are 6 out of 10. Um, I'd say let's just give it an even 5, honestly. <laughs> this is Unreal Engine 4, the game. Okay. This yeah. is a game that is extremely derivative of what came before it. It really reminds me of an Xbox 360 PS3 game. I'm playing, so it's only on PS4 xbox one and steam i'm playing it on the ps5 i think the i think playing it on disc on ps5 it doesn't look as good as it should there's some optimization settings that are compromised so the fur looks like feathers and the fur the fur looks real weird yeah, it looks really weird and it, it it does that unreal engine thing where like uh depth of field blurring always looks really chunky where you could just see like there's no like gradient with the blurring it's just like oh this part of it is like extremely blurry there and is then... some slider that is too high yeah and it, it it it's got the weight and animation and floatiness of an unreal 4 game um and this kind of has a lot of like tiny little things in this game which like are easy to point out now that the game is done and dusted you can just be like oh well if they did this it would be like you know you know, like like if, if you tweaked all these little bits and pieces, it would be a better game. But some of the tiny little things they do are that I don't really like are okay. So I think the map of this game is like eight kilometers uh, north and south, east, west, which is an okay size. I wish it was actually smaller and denser because what happens is you end up seeing a lot of the same stuff repeating itself, and the gaps in between are just far enough that you lose interest. I kind of wish they were just a little bit closer I, I would love if people started making like like more intimate open world games like just hey here here's an apartment building and mm. every fucking room yeah. in this apartment building has something cool like i i love like dead rising does it yakuza does it and like fuck all else does it and i love just smaller cooler open yeah world games. or like so, even hub worlds yeah. like you go to a i love a good hub. hub world yeah like um there, there there was one i played last year on the switch that indie game where you have to play as the bird going up the mountain Oh, I keep meaning to play that. A short hike. Like, that technically is an open world game, but it's just, it's a like a little micro garden of an open world game. But there's so much character to it that it, it, it all makes sense and everything is there for a reason. A lot of this is just kind of like, you will go into an outpost town and 
the merchant that does the clothes, the weapon builder, the, the, the guy who sells the horses, they're all in the exact same spot no matter which outpost you go to. Yeah, so Brian captured an outpost and I was playing as a playing with watching him and he was able to tell me the location of everyone just because he, oh, he had no. already seen I, them. I, I'd, I'd never been into that outpost, but I had because I'd mm-hmm. been to the other ones. And when you capture an outpost, you either fight like a big heavy, a bunch of small enemies or something in between like there's there's very little variety in this uh, game what's the combat like it is like batman arkham asylum kind of in well no you know how in batman arkham asylum when you defeat the last enemy it goes boom and goes into slow motion they make sure i do that oh um the combat is fine you just have to press the buttons faster than the enemy That's to me it all looks like batman arkham asylum in like zero g yeah like it's there's so little like impact or thud or anything it's just a real like lack of feedback i thought yeah sure remember there was one bit where like you were trying to you were like shooting you basically had to destroy they, like they, the they were shooting bombs at me and i had to ricochet the bombs but it wasn't the parry button it was the weapon hit button yes even though the game is a dedicated parry button which would make sense to reflect attacks it's a strange one. Um, so one of the things I really that really, really bothers me is, and I think this is an important thing with an open world game, is I think if you're in any sort of an open world game, start you off in the middle of the map. Because that really gives you a sense of you can go in any direction. This game puts you right at the south of the map, and you have no choice but to like engage with mandatory, non-optional, optional events. I put that mm. in quotations. He like, did, yeah. Uh, I can it, verify that. It feels very, yeah, orchestrated. How did you find the story? And I know it's told through a narrator. Oh my god, the narrator. Okay, so this game is very customizable in that you can change, like, a lot of the UI and how much you want to see of things. Like, there are comic book effects in the attack animations that do not match the art direction, really. So I turned that off. The narrator is... You know how I played Doshin the Giant recently and I, I was saying that... In that, it's a guy doing a David Attenborough impression. This is another narrator doing a David Attenborough impression, but he's being a jokey David Attenborough. But the joke is already that he's David Attenborough, so you don't need to like tell jokes because the humor should be in the seriousness. But in this, the narrator keeps trying to inject like quips and puns and humor, and it just falls flat. So within about an hour, I changed the narrator to be Japanese. Oh, and smart yeah um so i because the game well like first it was uh mandarin because it's sort of journey to the west inspired and there's its own fake martial arts called wong fu uh don't try harder than that yeah um but i definitely kind of wanted to make it sort of asian inspired but i found the Mandarin voice actor was okay. The Korean voice actor was way too low, but the Japanese voice actor had some bravado. So I, I, I just I, right. I, I, I went with him, um, and that was more adjustable because the British narrator was just like the worst. I don't think I've ever enjoyed a narrator in a game. I'm trying to think. I played like half an hour of Bastion once, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. he's yeah. he's a good voice actor, and then he ends up being in all the other. Um, I can't remember his name, but like he he, he is in all the. Uh, Disco Elysium has <laughs> has some good good narration from your internal organs i guess the stanley parable didn't that have a narrator yeah did yeah it did thing? yeah yeah that was fun do the portal games count as narrators well, i guess so i just personally I mean, they're, don't they're enjoy characters. them yeah. every time i hear that a game has a narrator i'm like oh in this you could turn the narrator off but the way you turn it off is you can have it at 100 percent or 10 percent so okay. I still wanted to leave it a tiny bit on, so I had it on 10%. But if you have, have it at 100%, every five steps, there'll be like yeah, Brian, a quip. Brian was like, watch this. <laughs> he turned the narrator. Like, I, I appreciate options like that because I know it can help with like accessibility stuff. But to me, I also feel like, you know, turning on and off like the comic book effects and stuff like that. It's like, well, like, do you like speaking to the person who would make the game? Do you think this looks good? Because if it does, then you should leave it in. And if you don't, you should take it out. I don't want to make that decision. You know, I, I, I want to experience your vision and hate it if I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I was just very disappointed. By can this I talk game. about the dialogue, Brian? Yeah. Okay. So like, 
The way fucking people talk in this game. Oh yeah, because they're not humans, but they have to like call human objects animal related or you so know everything has like a cute name so like an elevator is like ooh must go must must go toward the uppy downy and <laughs> the uppy oh, downy no. it is <laughs> obnoxious like it's so bad there's a bit where you have to unplug a uh, uh, a giant sink and it's like the the unplugged logo that sucks yeah um i think you can do stuff like that well i can't remember the name of it but there was an it's an english movie about like dogs and it's a man who gets turned into a magical dog whatever but um they have to use like dog language to describe things and you can do it really well so like say distance they call it overs because it's how many times you see the horizon and have to go over so they're like it's five but, but overs so there's that has like there's like a logic kind of to that yeah. that's yeah. kind of interesting you know because it's dog like logic. that that puts you in the space of how a dog would think about mm-hmm. this this i don't know like this is just full is, of flim is, is flams it, is and tr- tingamajigs and uh, is it like i don't know if the goal is to be, to be cute and or what this game is for 12 year olds <laughs> I, okay here's why why do you think like people wanted this game to be good so much furries furries i feel like a lot of people well, are looking forward to it though so I, I, are a I, lot of people closet furries I, I think rocket raccoon is real cool yeah. and that's what people want um i i i also think if i was 12 i'd love this game and i wouldn't like i just be like this is okay, it okay a lot of the people i see hyped about it are like dudes in their late 20s on twitter I think people just like the aesthetic of like this kind of like you know mouse guard like this kind of it fucked really up does have a mouse guard kind of thing. You know, it, it's a fucking it, a red wall or mouse yeah. guard game. It's it's really we like one of those that. that's yeah. post apocalyptic Mad Maxi mm-hmm. and like it it I I love that stuff about this game and I do like the character creator. I made a very cool character that's kind of half red panda half fennec fox. So he's got like the bushy and stripiness of a red panda, but the long ears of a fennec fox. Like I I. There, there was moments of this game where I was like, this is going to be something special. And then it wasn't because it's just the same game you've already played a hundred times. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Apparently it sold very well. Oh, I'd say it did, but there's nothing but else. There's nothing That's out. True. That like, is true. I think anything will kind of sell well. We should right make now. a game. <laughs> I'd say if we shout out a game in like two weeks, we'd be do it do all right. What do you guys want to make? Uh, I want it to be Point and Click Adventure and it's called uh, Navigating John's Face. <laughs> Okay, uh, probably going to vote no on that one. With Neve as a narrator. <laughs> Neve, do you want to give a sample line? <laughs> Would you like to explore? Oh, you were clicking on something a little fun right there. What's that? It's please, a please, lumpy bumpy. Please stop. <laughs> lumpy bumpy. <laughs> oh, you've got yourself an eyelash. Oh, no, don't. Make this a is, wish. This is going to be a fun <laughs> section. We could, we could go back and forth, but no. Go on, John. <laughs> No, I don't want to improv. I'm, I'm not, I Come don't, on, this is filling me. This with is confusing this is grade bad. D material. This is some like top notch sludge. Come on. I mean, if you guys want to do some improv, no. Um, that dog movie was called Dean Spanley. If anyone wants to watch an right. English man be a dog, Dean Spanley. Because I, I I I watched <laughs> and a Tim Allen. <laughs> was Dean Spanley? <laughs> I, I I watched the Tim Allen dog movie. Jeez, this is a real movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not something Neve just made up. That's crazy. <laughs> Whoa, Sam Neill's in it. Sam Jurassic Park Neil. <laughs> it's actually kind of okay. <laughs> Starring Jer- 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 Jeremy Northen as Fist Jr. in brackets, Henslow. And then Peter O'Toole as Fist Sr. in brackets, Horatio. I think the last dog movie I watched was Plague Dogs. I think, oh, dear. Yeah, don't, don't anyone watch that. <laughs> just, just... <laughs> A great movie that no one should ever watch. Yeah. Uh, Buy a Mutant. It's unfortunate that it is what it is. Um, do you think they do a Buy a Mutant 2? Do you think it's good? Do you think they... Well, they've got a lot of patching to do, that's for sure. Yeah. And they're, 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 they're doing a couple updates and they'll be adding tweaks. It seems like this game is still in beta, but I paid 55 euro for it. Yeah. I do not think I would like this game. But I want I want these guys to do well. Yeah. Like, I hope, yeah. I hope, they, I hope they try again. I hope they make something cooler and better. Neve, speaking of little indie games that couldn't, tell us about Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, 
again, I am sad and I'm allowed my comforts. So I'm going back to playing, um, to replay Red Dead Redemption 2. And as I've said many times on this podcast, I did not like the first three chapters of that when I first played it, just because I did not understand what the game wanted from me. I could not control Arthur. I thought I had way more freedom than the game allows you. The f- every one of those, like, first couple of sessions I had was like, oh, I got to push through some fucking mud here. Yeah, it was so confusing and it made me just like, like the first few hours of that game is a blur. So it's really nice to go back and replay it knowing how to control Arthur, not just shoot things and people randomly. And Hosea is all like, well, Arthur's really capable and great. And then you're just like punching your horse. So it's like, it's nice to go back and play it from the start, knowing how to control him and... Uh, the start of it's great and all the pieces are just laid down before you like Dutch is in the camp and he's already being like Arthur you're gonna betray me and Arthur's just like that's a really weird thing to say Dutch um, so I'm just spending a lot of time in the camp and watching these kind I st- of I stuff play out love that game. Like, it's fantastic and you know, it's, it's one of the games when I talk about it on stream people get pissed really oh my god my hot my top 100 stream i had to like stop for a minute and be like lads chill out about red dead all right like like it got to that level that's okay. nuts i really love being in that world like i like i like the nature of it i love that it looks like a living world that is alive without my influence in it like that stuff is happening all the time totally I like that when you study an animal, Arthur gets his little sketchbook. You can check his sketchbook and he's drawn the animal you've studied. He's drawn the flowers he studies. He's drawn the birds he studies. There's loads of like dialogue I missed earlier on. And he's just so self-deprecating. But he's, he's talking... He's such <sighs> an amazing character. He's like, such a great guy. <laughs> I think like in a lot of open world games, like I just I do my own thing. But I think I think Red Dead does kind of funnel you into role playing Arthur. Oh, for In a way real? that's like really cool. Mm-hmm. Like, when you talk to Mary Beth, who I'd never really talked to the first time around, because she's just, like, one of the camp girls at the camp. But, like, she's a writer, and she loves to read, and she's reading all the time. And Arthur is just like, oh, I'm a bit of a writer, but I'm shit at it. You know? And he's just, like, so sad <laughs> and lo- down on himself. I love memes, Arthur and Bridget. <laughs> I'm not the best. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of shitty. I remember once I was looking in the mirror, and I can't remember he says something like, no one will ever want you. You're old and ugly. <laughs> he's not. He's so beautiful. But yeah, just nice to play it again, knowing how to control him and not forwarding the story past a certain point. I'm not going to set Micah free anytime soon. Because... I, think, I think the game just ends like 40 hours in the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going to do the mission for Herr Strauss uh, where that man coughs into Arthur's mouth. So I, I don't think that happens. Either do I. Yeah. So I'm just going to, you know, study some animals. And the photo mode's in it from the start now because it didn't launch with a photo mode. So it's also really nice to go back and take photos of badgers. I remember when I got, like, proper into Red Dead. I, I, I was really, like, just miserable, really burnt out from, like, YouTube. Just really sad in general over a bunch of stuff. And I, I played that game for, like, six hours a day. And it was really pathetic, but it was really what I needed. That's exactly where I'm. Where I'm at. I need my my game about grief and death. Um, that's also quite easygoing, and it's 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 Red Dead. Yeah, that game is almost three years old now. Nuts. Came out. I think it was like October thirty first, twenty eighteen. What beat that for a game of the year? Smash Ultimate. Fuck all you. <laughs> I, I play I play Smash Ultimate like once a week. Oh, I still play Red Dead. Um, uh, the thing the PlayStation Five does, which I really like, is it gives your time, your hours played on every single game now. Oh, that's really good. Uh, so I am up to three hundred and fifty hours on Red Dead. I don't know that I've ever played any game that much. Maybe Binding of Isaac if you added up everything. And I'm not. I'm not proud of that. Yeah. Oh, guys, I downloaded Shin Megami Tensei three. Oh. But yeah, this just came yeah. out. This is the PS2 this. game that got a HD port. Yeah. This is a weird game. So Shin Megami Tensei famously is the original series that Persona span off from. Persona is now the much bigger deal globally. I would imagine in Japan as well. I don't see nearly as much Shin Megami Tensei stuff. No, but this is what Atlas originally made. Yeah, and this is a remake of Shin Megami Tensei 3. I think I, I, I think it's a remake. Like, all the character models are new and, like, all the textures are up-res. Like, it doesn't seem like a remaster. 
Yeah. Basically, it is really interesting looking at the differences between this and Persona. Like, first of all, like, if you want pers anything relating to Persona besides turn-based combat, you are not getting it here. It's like, got Jack Frost in it. It's got Jack Frost. It's got monsters. I've, I, I'm, I'm like three hours in. I've seen two dicks. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is hey. this the leftovers? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, peens are real important. Yeah. There is something about this game that I could really see turning people off. And Brian, like you said before that like you were looking at it and you thought there was like a kind of emptiness to it. Very corridor-y or like it feels like you're in school after hours. Yes. I would understand if that pissed someone off. There's something about the vibe of it I really, really like. Well, like it's it's definitely got a vibe, that's for sure. This is this is like a halfway point between Persona and Silent Hill. Oh, cool. because it's all just empty and weird and quiet, and I I kind of love it. And like, I don't love all the character designs, but when you put them all together, they have like an aesthetic. You know, they ha they have a real look to them. And like, uh, some guy just turned up recently, and he's wearing like one of those old like Japanese World War Two jackets and like a cap, but then he has like cowboy boots and a sick katana, and it's like. They're, they're going for a look here, and um, it's kind of a game I just like to turn on and just listen to a podcast, because it's just going to be a couple of hours of me going through a dungeon just smashing monsters, but it looks really good, the music's amazing, and the voice acting is really, really good. Like, the characters are they're interesting. Um, I don't know how much of them there is. Like, I think, I think a lot of this game is a dungeon crawler, and the whole premise of it is, like, you know, you know the way in like Persona, you're trying to stop something bad happen. Yeah. This is like something bad has really ha has already happened, and now we're going to rebuild the world from scratch. And it's just you running around the dashes, the like the dust and ashes of Tokyo, and it's fucking weird. And like, there's so many things where I could see people not liking it, but I I, I like the vibe of it a lot. You know, it does feel hopeless. You know, it feels. It is a really, like, op open, oppressive atmosphere because you're running around these streets and there's just no one. And then, like, something about it as well, that emptiness, I feel like that's something that, like, the PlayStation 2 was really good at doing because it couldn't render a bunch of, like, you know, incidental character models. It couldn't do crowds. It couldn't do anything like that. And so games that were about, like, you know, loneliness and emptiness, like the Silent Hill series... The Silent Hill series reached its peak on PS2 because it's like a machine made to do that shit. And I think that's so interesting. And I really like seeing that, like, the echoes of that technology in this game. And I think that's really cool about it. Um, some shit is a bit disappointing. Like, the battle music is compressed to hell. Oh, that's really disappointing. It sounds so bad. And I, I don't know what happened. Like, it, it sounds like... It sounds like a MIDI that's been uploaded and downloaded from LimeWire a couple of times. Oh. And that's disappointing. But um, if people are curious about this, like, I would go for it. I, I would say, like, if you're coming from a place of loving Persona, this is not Persona at all. Like, I... I And, like, you know, I like Persona. I don't think I've ever really fallen in love with the series. But um, I think this one's, like, it's a little, it's a little darker. A little edgier. He's got like a horn coming out of his like, uh, but not, out, out of the back of his neck. Out of the it? back of his fucking neck. Yeah. What's that about? You can hang on to it. Yeah, but um, I like <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a joystick. Um, go on, John. Sorry. God fucking damn it, Brian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. I like it. It's it, it's cool. I think just know what you're in for. You fucking having a good chuckle over there, Brian. <laughs> he said, good, I like. <laughs> like, good, stop, I like, stop. And that's like your review for the game. <laughs> I really feel like I had some very insightful comments up until that point, oh, Brian. You, John, you're a very intelligent person. Like me, I'm I'm, I'm having like whatever, I, I don't, it's not even toilet humor. It's like the sewer system. It's just. Is this on the Switch? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, I think I, I think 50 euro is a tough sell on it. Mm. I, I, I was just, I was at a point where I was kind of, just I needed something that wasn't Disco Elysium. Still playing Disco Elysium, by the way. Liking it more and more all the time. I'm on the third day. That Kim, what a fucking sweetheart. Just my brave little boy. And I, I love him. 
That's all I gotta say. I'll talk about it more when I beat it. I'm, I'll probably never beat Shin Megami Tensei because I bet it's like a hundred hours, but I'm having fun with it. Brian. Yes. Returnal. Uh, I got a loan of Returnal, and I believe John now has a loan of Returnal. Uh huh. I have a loan of a loan. A loan of a loan. I played it for a couple hours, and I think it's a great game, but it's not for me, unfortunately. I was saying this to you earlier on. It's not going to be a brand new analogy. Video games are interesting. You play different genres of games. You find the genres you like. You find the ones you don't like. Sometimes you play a game and all the ingredients are there, but it's just not your taste. This is an ice cream flavor that I just don't quite like. So this could be like the best pistachio lime in the world, but... If you you're not like a fan of that. pistachio. Okay. No, I'm a fan of pistachio. Okay, yeah, well, let's not get silly. But, you know, I don't like strawberry ice cream. Holy shit. You know what I don't like? Chocolate ice cream. Yeah, not a yeah. fan. Yeah. No, Michelle loves it. I don't get it. Um, I like vanilla ice cream with, like, crushed Oreo and stuff. But, like, straight up chocolate ice cream isn't really for me. I feel like Oreo has been just so overused. Yeah. Overuse it into my soul. Bury me in I kind of get it, though, because it also overpowers every other flavor. Like, I don't want banana Oreo. Just give me banana. Hmm. Mm. So, anyway, moving on. <laughs> I like chocolate mint. That's my favorite ice cream flavor. Uh, not, not a fan. Not a fan. What the fuck? Mint is super contentious. I like mint. But... Do you like honey? Uh, honey vanilla? Oh, yeah. yeah. Honey and anything. Honeycomb and I anything. love honeycomb. And, like, oh, it works so, so well with the coldness and it gives you that crunch. Oh, you, know, you get some fucking cookie dough in there. Cookie dough is very good. Fucking snort that shit. <laughs> Raw ingredients. Mm-hmm. Uh, Returnal is a game. It's a <laughs> roguelike game and it's made by Housemark. Uh, Housemark originally, they're a Swedish developer. Are they? No, they're Finnish. Interesting studio. Yes. Uh, they made Resogun, which was the first PS Plus game on the PS4 back in November 2013. And I thought Resogun was pretty cool. I think I think Resogun's cool. I think it's interesting in that it is one of those games where if it had released at any other point of that life cycle, no one would ever talk about it. Oh yeah, for but sure. But it has just become this kind of staple. Yeah, and so this is a third person action adventure roguelike, but it still uses the shooter mechanics that are in rogue that 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 are in Resogun. But it kind of feels a bit like near automata as well, or I guess near replicant where the enemies shoot out a wave of orbs and you either have to dash through them or jump over them. Mm. So it is you shooting from a ranged distance and the enemies do too. Um, You play a protagonist. I can't remember her name. She crash lands on an alien planet. She's exploring the planet. Gives off Metroid vibes right away, which I was super into. You're on an ancient alien planet that once belonged to an ancient civilization. There's architecture everywhere. And you are playing a space explorer woman who has a troubled past. And that past is explored as you delve deeper into the planet. Uh, You will stumble across the house you grew up in. And you will see your mother. And she's not ready to confront that problem just yet. And some of the doors in that house are locked. Maybe someday she will return. Oh. What? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, like the name of the game. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah. Control's great. The atmosphere is super good. Feels it, nice. Yeah, it feels nice. It, it's definitely a PS5 game. It, 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 it's a step up. And it uses the dual sense. There's bits where it's raining and you've got the pitter-patter on the controllers. Um, it's cool. But it just wasn't for me. And, like, I think it's because it's a roguelike. I, I can only play so many roguelikes in my life. I can't even play a roguelike every year. It has Like, for me, it's, it's got to be every couple of years. And... This is the kind of game where if you put in the time, you'll get it back as an investment, but I just wasn't willing to invest time into it. Yeah, I, I feel like a bit of that reluctance as well. I think after Hades, I'm kind of like, I'm a little burnt out on roguelikes. Because last year you did Hades and Spelunky. Like, oh my god, yeah. Like, that's a big old chunk of time to ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm on I'm on cooldown with Spelunky. Not allowed. You're on cold turkey? Yeah. So, yeah, like, like Returnal, I could see myself like, becoming one of those people that's like super into Returnal but it was making me really really angry and Rebecca was like dude don't play that because <laughs> like, you're getting here you're, you're being a salty old sausage how often does your partner comment on like you playing a video game because I, I know I really don't like a video game where Michelle's like you just look so angry with this game she hasn't seen me this angry since I played Fury oh but like John, like this is your kind of game. Neil, this is your kind of game. It's it's just not my vibe, unfortunately. Even though I, I appreciate this game wholeheartedly. 
I really want to try it. I'm just like, I was a little turned off by the length of the runs being extremely long. And they are... there's no kind of mid saves that you can. No, and the game utilize. still needs to be patched. Like, I still really wish there was like a demo of this game or something mm. to entice people. You see, like, I had a, I had at least two weekends where I was like sitting around my apartment, there was nothing to do, and I was like, I should go play Returnal, and then I'm like, oh, but it's eighty quid. Yeah, like and it's like, mm-hmm. uh, and but then I'm like, but you're so bored, and I'm like, yeah, eighty fucking quid, like that's nearly a hundred quid. It's it's gonna drop a price by the end of the year, like yeah. I I I, yeah. I think it'll it, it'll do yeah, well next year. Yeah, I think it's like, because like Returnal is meant to be tough as nails. I think it is it's, very tough. I think it's pretty bad for the playstation 5 that it's both that it's exclusives right now are demon's souls and returnal which are just kind of two tough as nails games mm-hmm. for yeah. anyone who's got this console who wants to play an exclusive Can I, well we got two weeks till ratchet and clank and we're all gonna be playing that Ugh, it's like i might actually yeah <laughs> <All those things. laughs> no Ugh. Oh. I'm not a I'm not a fan of the Ratchet and Clank series. You're, Jack you're and more, Daxter. yeah, yeah. You're more Jack and Daxter. I'm always amazed how it's always one or the other with people. Mm-hmm. Like I would have just thought if you're into Jack and Daxter, you're into Ratchet and Clank. No, totally different vibes. And I've played like the older Ratchet and Clank. Could you describe the vibe difference to me, Neve? One, 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 one's had sex. One has it. Yeah, literally. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> well, like well, um, one was in prison, so like. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jack is like like especially Jack Two was a little bit of a GTA clone, so it kind of had a more open world. It had guns, and I know that Ratchet and Clank has guns as well. But Ratchet and Clank had a way more like we're doing funny comedy, and none of it ever made me laugh. I always thought it was extremely unfunny, and yeah. I liked Ratchet and I liked Clank. I hated the bad guy, and I just never liked the dialogue or the storytelling. Where Jack was really like we're being serious. And because of that, it was nearly funnier because it was like this silly game that was trying to be extra serious Grand Theft Auto-esque. Just okay. dystopian fairy misery. Yeah. I can feel like a bunch of jokes coming about Jack and Daxter, but I can also feel that I've made those jokes on this podcast. I think we did a whole bit on Dark Jack before and then that was real. Yeah, Dark Jack is real. Yeah. Dark Jack is real yeah. and his dick is huge. Seriously. Huge. Oh, yeah. And he like has a spin attack and that thing just flies. <laughs> knocks people out oh man if I got knocked out with a dick attack I'd be like ah oh, that fight didn't go well <laughs> so like if getting hit by a dick attack does does that count as an upper or a lower attack mid well it depends on the target it's a full on mid like it's gonna just <laughs> yeah. it's like a full on groin blow well because it, it could sweep your feet or it could <laughs> <laughs> depending on like the angle that he's going for let's fight a boss everybody <laughs> bad podcast <laughs> earlier we paused and he was like this is this is a terrible episode, and I was like, it's terrible in all the right ways. Do you still think it's terrible, Neve? Yeah, but I, every time we record an episode, I'm like, this is the fucking worst podcast. <laughs> this is the one that gets us in trouble. Like, this is the Neve, when we when we turn off the mics, Neve's always like, and I fucking quit. <laughs> and I'm like, do you think she'll be back next time? Brian, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> she's always got something to say. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not about Jack, it's about Daxter. <laughs> Oh, so Brian, just not for you. It's just not for me, and it's a shame because it's a great game. Oh, I'm gonna give it a go next week. I I wanted to play it more, but I'm I am slammed at the moment, and I will. I look forward to playing that and Virtua Fighter. You're slammed or you railed? <laughs> Those mean different things, Brian. You like choked? They're not even. Kind. Are you like pinned? <laughs> He's railed by the mid attacks. <laughs> by the what? By the mids, mid attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Keep mids up, spins. John. It's <laughs> It's, it's it's like a skipping rope that you don't avoid. Okay, this is not appropriate. It's a, no. It's a video game podcast. Um, it, okay. I, I played a little bit of Spirit Fair. Okay. Yeah, this, um, this game's had to be really sweet. Yeah, I, I asked uh, people for recommendations um, for short form media um, about grief and death because just really struggle, struggling without my dog and um, a lot of people recommend Spiritfarer and I absolutely understand why. I've only played the first couple of hours of it so I haven't much to say about it. I think it might lean a bit twee for my personal taste but maybe that's what I need. Maybe now is the time for twee but usually when I'm sad I gravitate towards awful shit like really 
dark stuff like horror movies and stuff I don't know why um so I think it might be a little twee but I started it and it looks really beautiful the art direction is gorgeous yeah it looks great um but yeah, I, I, I want to play more before I talk about it at any length. I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for the recommendations. And I understand why people were recommending it to me. Neve, do you remember I mentioned this game to you? Yes. And do you remember your reaction? I was like, that sounds like shit. I can't believe hugging is a mechanic. <laughs> and then I deleted it from the episode docket. And, I like, okay. and then I didn't play anymore because I was sad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I'm yeah. I'm very cynical, but like I absolutely can understand why this might be good for me now. Um, if I drop my cynicism, and I will attempt to. I really liked what I played of that game. I, it's one I want to go back to. There's a lot of resource gathering which I do not like, but I think the writing is is good. Like it's strong, and like it's it's not trying to be super funny. It's not trying to be like you know anything except just this very sweet story about grief and it being okay and all this kind of stuff and i think that's a tough subject matter to tackle but from what i've seen i I think they 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 do it well yeah i was thinking about just like grief and death in media and just how it's like such a personal experience but also a, a hugely universal experience that we all go through Uh, at different times in our lives and it's like a really hard thing to create media and art about because it's because of its very personal nature and I think people need these things at different times Mm. kind of thing and I don't know it's hard to know what will appeal to different people in different times I can totally see something I'm playing through um or I, I just played through Mother 3 again and that that game is like all about grief and there's something about it I really love in that, like, the big strokes of the story, they're really tragic. Like, it's just about, you know, this tragic thing happens and a member of a family dies and it just completely, it's its not even that she's gone. It's like her absence kind of splits everyone else apart. But then the world itself is really funny and weird and just cool and, like, really fun to explore and there's something about that that like really hit me because it, it, it was sort of like awful things are happening in these characters lives but the world outside their lives is still really like worthwhile and beautiful and good and it's like you're just waiting for them to get to a point that they can see that and I think that is I think that's that's a really interesting way of looking at grief yeah yeah it's a very abstract uh, thought yeah I think Nier Automata will always be my favorite game about this kind of stuff. And like, I was going to play Nier Replicant, but then I was like, this might actually kill me if I play this oh, right Niamh, now. There's a, I, I, there's that death scene. I know, I know. I, I, was, I was watching Rebecca play last night. It was the bit with the old man and the dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just, I've played that already. I'm like, yeah, I was like, no, I don't no, no, think no. I need to be there right yeah, now. Yeah, because she got to that bit and she was like, was that meant to happen? I'm like, yeah, that's definitely meant to happen. And she read up and she was like, yeah, that was meant to happen. I'm like, it's the, it's this. <laughs> no, you can't save that dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is near we're talking about. It's not going to have a happy ending. Uh, yeah, there's there's something melancholy about it as well. Um, I, I, I I do think there's 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 a point to having a sense of progression in a world of sadness that kind of gets you through it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, grief, like it's 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 it is difficult. To, like it is difficult, I think, to make art about it. But I think like the art that succeeds is super important. And like yeah. from what I've seen, and like I kind of agree with you, Neve, on Spirit Fair. Like I think Spirit Fair is like a little saccharine for me. But I think the things it's doing is is cool enough that I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, I feel like now's the time for me to play this game. So how would you guys like? To talk about another video game about dying. Well, you... John, that's kind of sick. Neve! I... <laughs> John, I, are you sure now you want to really, you know, I think that's a bit insensitive. Yeah. Like, Neve's not in a good place. I asked, was this okay during the break? John, why is your face going red? Go on, John. <laughs> no! <laughs> no Come on, John, this. pull the fucking trigger. No, I didn't play anything. I played nothing else. I can't do this. Did you play Happy Boy and Gummy Land? That's that what we... I played, Happy Boy and Gummy Land, and you get the, the marshmallow parachute and everything ends fine. It says here adios, which, God which, fucking which, which I think is Spanish for goodbye. So I played adios, and um, this is one of those games where like you sit down and you beat it. 
it's like hour, hour and a half. My playthrough of it was an hour, but apparently some people's are an hour and a half. I guess because they're shit. <laughs> Not real gamers. <laughs> You're bad at the grief game, buddy. <laughs> what, what, what? Were you crying? <laughs> um, Not you, because you had a big fucking smile on your face the whole time. Yeah, I was like, I fucking beat it! <laughs> <laughs> 59 minutes, bitches! <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm in max grief. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, no, no. Okay, so this, this game is basically, you're a pig farmer. And it starts <laughs> off... <laughs> what's funny about that, Brian? It's a little piggy. <laughs> There's a little baby um, going like along the mud. It starts off, and you're just like sitting on your porch, like your old swinging rocking chair. And this black car pulls up, and a guy gets out of it. And it says like tab to look at you your to do list. And you look down, and it's just like tell him it's over. And it's like what the fuck? And you go up and you greet this guy, and this guy like it's like kind of like looks like a time splitters model, you know really like elongated features big like long limbs and everything but then like he opens his mouth and the voice acting is like really good it's like i don't know who this person is but i would be shocked if they didn't like hadn't done other stuff or even like tv kind of stuff and they're real warm with each other the two guys like these are like old friends you know and you start to kind of pick like little pieces little bits and pieces out of what they're saying and you understand and after a while if you don't want any spoilers fuck off um but we <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna say anything more that isn't in like the Steam description of the game. Yeah. But if you just if if my word alone is enough to sell you on something, and it shouldn't be, then good yeah, fine, go play this game. But um you realize that this dude works for the mafia and every month he brings you dead bodies and that are cut up and you feed them to your pigs, and that's how they dispose of corpses. And it's really hard it's it's kind of nearly it, it's not like a twist or anything because there's never like a revelation it's just this piece of information that kind of slowly dawns on you and the guy doesn't seem to mind too much because like you're talking about like oh you take him into the shed and you show him like your soda pop machine collection this farmer who's like also a really well voice acted he's like he's like this 50 year 55 year old dude he his wife is dead and he doesn't really have a lot besides this farm but he doesn't want to do this shit anymore. And um, it's really good because you can sense like the genuine friendship between this mafia hitman and this farmer. Then there is just this kind of moment where he's like, but like the whole time the mafia guy is like, ah, you're not done. Like, come on, like st stop this. But then there's this moment where it kind of starts to, you, like hit home with the mafia dude that you're not going to do this anymore. And he's like, okay, if you're out, you know what that means. And your guy's just like, I do. And there's this really interesting little feature where um, you have dialogue options and sometimes like there's a dialogue option and you go to click on it and it disappears because the guy just can't say it. Oh, cool. Oh, that's really good. And that's like, that ends up being this really interesting like window into this dude's thoughts. And um, basically from there, the mafia dude's just like, okay, See you at night. And the rest of the game is you living out the last couple of hours of this pig farmer. And um, it's really understated. There's not really like many big emotional moments. Like there's a part where he calls his son and you find out what happened between him and his son. And it's, it's fucking sad. Like it's really, really sad. But you know, a lot of it's like you go out to your field and you let the gate open so your horse can run free. And it's great. It's a really, really good game. And I'm not going to go into like what happens at night, but to me, it was just exactly what it needed to be. And I kind of, it was one of those games I beat it and I was like, huh, okay. And it stuck with me a lot. And I have kind of thought about it a lot. And uh, That's a, a good game. Yeah, that's a good game. And I think people should play it. I think it's like 12 bucks on Steam or something. I'm sure it'll be on Switch or PS4 eventually or whatever. But um. I don't think too many people know about it. This was actually recommended by one of our fans on the Discord. Uh, he messaged me like two months ago and he was like, you should play uh, You should play Adios. And then um, he, he kind of messaged me again recently. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to fucking play it, okay? And he did. And then I did. did. Yeah. A few people recommended to me in my 
when I was asking for recommendations about this kind of stuff. So I might play it as well. It's a very sweet little game. Now, like it is, it is minimal. Yeah. Like there is very little to the to the game. Like you know, it's it's definitely like a it's a passion project from someone. But like I I liked that. Like I, yeah. I like the idea of games being like you know more consumable and even like a little I guess I don't know disposable because you just you pick this up and you're done with it like you're not gonna go you're not gonna replay this game but it's it's cool and it got me you know it it really got me and a lot of it was just like it makes you think like man if I only had like a couple of hours left to live like what would I do and it would probably be a lot of really basic shit you know because that's what it kind of comes down to good game um brian yeah let's talk to me about another game about death talk to me about the metal slug anthology okay metal slug is 25 years old can you guys believe it that's crazy uh 25th anniversary was at the end of may and sony's eShop psn store is that what it's called they were doing a sale so the metal slug anthology was five quid and i was like yeah sure and so i downloaded it and i owned this game already on the wii I, I've lost times how many how much Metal Slug I own. Yes, um, because they've not made a Metal Slug in a very long time. I think the last one was either on the DS or the PSP. I think that was either Metal Slug Seven or no, I think Metal Slug Seven. Yeah, sorry, Metal Slug Seven's on the DS, and then Metal Slug XX is on the PSP. Yeah, and they're the two meser- t- they're they're the two most recent ones, and they're fifteen years old now. Oh man! So I got this for the PS Five because it was on offer, and I was feeling like playing uh, Metal Slug. So I download this game. First of all, it's not on the shop front on the PlayStation 5. You have to download it via a browser or a different app. Because when you launch the game, it says there will be slight problems with this game. It has like a little UI thing with the PlayStation 5 in the corner saying like, this is game is it going to run the way it should. Really? Why? I don't know. Well, actually, no, I do know. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the game starts up and it goes... Metal Slug, 10th anniversary. And I'm like, wait, what's 25th anniversary? (laughs) And then it says, checking PlayStation 2 memory card. Oh. And I'm like, what, what, what? This game is a PlayStation 4 game emulating a PlayStation 2 game, emulating PlayStation 1 (laughs) ports of Metal Slug. You think these fucking kids will notice? Put it on the goddamn store! And so... All the menus in this game are in like 480p and they look jank. Oh, it, it, I think 480p is a stretch. Okay, 240p. Let's uh, be a bit more realistic. And they're not the best. There are some options. You can play the game in full screen. You can play it in, with some borders. You can turn the scan lines on or off. When you actually launch one of the Metal Slug games, it does display it in 1080p, which is good. There's some slight screen tearing. But the big problem is there's a bit of a delay with the control inputs. It's not a full second, mm. but there's a bit of chunk but to it's it. It's metal slug. It's metal slug, and you need twitch controls for it. You, 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 it needs to be precise. Now, because because this is the port of the arcade game, you have unlimited lives, and I just wanted to have it easy access. Um, but I'm a bit disappointed. Like I'm sure this plays fine on the PS4 Pro. Maybe it plays a bit better. The PS5 is a weird one. I think we've all had it long enough now that we have a few grievances with it. My biggest grievances are this, that sometimes it doesn't actually play a game that it's supposed to, or it has this weird emulation-like paradox to it. Uh, the DualSense controller battery life, not a fan of it. <gasps> it's so bad, I can't yeah. get over it. Yeah, like, I, I, I've i pre-ordered the red DualSense, but I'm pre-ordering one because I need to have a spare because mm-hmm. it's constantly yeah, running you, out. Yeah, you need, you yeah. need a cycle. Yeah, you do. And, like, it's nuts because like I look at the other controllers like its closest contemporary is the Switch Pro controller and now like that thing has an 80 hour battery like now it does have HD rumble and the, but the rumble in, in the dual sense is way more sophisticated like it's a much more fancier controller but the battery life in a dual sense is like a day and a bit of gaming you know or like it it, it feels like every second day you need to charge it or like yeah. it feels like you you you'll you'll turn on the PS5 and your battery is low and you're like okay I guess I'm doing this session with the controller plugged in. Yep. Yeah. And uh, that's happened to me a couple of times and I don't like wires. Every day I hate the design of it more. And lot of, not even for the looks but because it keeps coming out of the clip. Like you know the stand? Yeah. It, it just it keeps coming out of that and I'm like oh is it plugged in right? It's also making this weird like 
rattling noise. The disk drive is really loud yeah. on yeah, some games is. when it's running off disk. Yeah. Um, but I, I I guess it's just at that point where we're two or three months into owning it that we've kind of noticed yeah. what works and what doesn't work. That and Biomutant is a PS4 game running on the PS5, but it seems like there's a lot of compromises. It just seems like some PS4 games just run better on the PS4 and not on the PS5, which is what I thought the PS5 was the point of it was that it was like the best version of the PlayStation 4, but apparently it isn't. Mm. So Metal Slug. Metal Slug is great. Um, oh, also I plugged in my Hori Fighting Gamepad that was originally for the PS3 and PS4, but it works one-to-one with the PS5, and I tried that with Metal Slug, and that was way more fun. Nice. Good stuff. Neve. Yes. We played the demo for Scarlet Nexus. Oh, cool. You played it too? Uh-huh. Great. Um, I played Scarlet Nexus. What is this? Is it an action RPG? Uh, yeah, I guess so. It, it, it? It's very like... It's it's like a middle ground between like a Tales of and like a Devil May Cry game. Yeah. You get a start screen on this demo and you can pick between a boy or a girl. I picked the girl, Kasane Randall. Randall, just weird name. Okay. We're 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 here. Kasane O'Toole. Randall. <laughs> oh, okay. And I like their outfits. It's a real like streetwear style. It's a looker the um, game. looks cool. Uh, combat is you can feel the near influence on this game all over it in terms of the menus and the map and kind of just some of the aesthetic especially in Kasane Randall's uh, her, her her part of it is in a different location than the boys part and a lot of just like junk. rust and junk and cranes and you can kind of feel that near vibe to it the combat is um, hack and slash but you have this thing called psychokinesis which is very much like the control gameplay where you can throw and launch it's it's kind of like control if control was good no um it's like control if control was anime <laughs> yeah. and the battle system was a bit more simple there's a lot of systems in the gameplay but it's all very easy to pull off it, you look cool like doing it well, I yeah I, I got it to a point where i was really hitting a nice flow with it and yeah. i was fucking destroying enemies and that felt great yeah no you can definitely once you um get into it you can really just chain stuff so you can like you have your like your standard attack your heavy attack you have an air attack and you oh, have here. your psycho kinesis stuff where you're throwing objects while you're hitting them to chain stuff together i thought i thought the psycho kinesis like felt very good yeah like i like the you kind of there's a there's a move you can do where you kind of slingshot the item back and then throw it mm-hmm. it's cool and then you also have a group of your teammates um who all have special abilities that you can use in battle you get you meet an enemy who moves too fast so you need to use your teammate's ability that will slow down the enemy or you have a teammate who has electricity moves are mm. another that can double up stuff and another that turns you invisible so different enemies might require you to use different teammates powers and um i quite enjoyed the combat i thought it was um, really fun it, w- it seems like one of those things that you could get really mindlessly into for a really long time kind of thing i could also see a potential for there being a decent skill ceiling if they use it the right way yeah i don't know if i th- maybe I felt like it was less about skill and more about looking cool especially with those like button like left trigger button ones where you kind of got that little bit of vignette yeah. of her co- doing a cool move to finish them off yeah it kind of felt like near automata where what you get out of the gameplay is probably how much you want to put into it nearly mm. kind of thing if it had like the same level of customization as automata that'd be great yeah but um if if that's kind of it, then that would be like, oh, okay. Because but look, like, it does feel great. Like, I was really impressed with how much, like, I, I kind of felt like this, a lot of these people worked on Tales of, and, like, I, I like Tales of, but, like, I think some of the combat for me from Tales does feel kind of rigid, and I thought this didn't feel like that. But um, that's kind of where I am with a lot of this, because, like, I could potentially see this being really cool, but I also feel like I don't know that much about it yet. And I think the story right now, it's very anime. Mm. And I was looking up the people who write it and they all work on a lot of very just anime series. And 
I don't want that because there's stuff I really like about this demo. Like, I, I had a great time with it. Like, I, I played it through and then I was like, oh, cool. And I went back and I played it through with the guy and it was fun. Like, I, I had fun. That boss fight felt was very satisfying. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the reviews for this. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. At, at with it, where I was like, that combat felt fun. The story, very anime, but it had a few things in it that I thought was interesting. I, I like I like big casts and they were introducing a lot of characters, but there was also stuff with like crows, which are these kind of that drone kind of interesting. paparazzi yeah. stuff. And it feels like a world where these, like this team that fights these monsters are kind of hounded by paparazzi and some of them kind of love it and some of them hate it kind and of thing. I, I liked that, that like they all had like different reactions to it. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, this is going to live and or die by these characters and story because the combat is what it is. It's it's fun if you want, like if you enjoy it. So it really is a wait for kind of reviews kind of thing. It did look like a PS4 game on my PS5. Like it, it the art direction's nice, but it did, did seem quite like an empty space mm. a lot of the time. I, ho- I hope they get real weird with those monster designs. They look cool. Yeah. Some of them are cool. I hope it's good. I really hope yeah, this review I'm is I'm rooting well. for it and I'll, like, I'll be keeping an eye on it and stuff. If this is kind of like... You see, my worry with this game is this is going to be a 60 hour go back to this zone and fight this monster now. Yeah. You know, like I don't want it to be that. I would love this to be a tight 12 hours with a lot of fun weird shit. We'll see. We'll it, see. It has an anime coming July 1st as well that's made by Sunrise. Um, they do Love Live and Gundam. That is not surprising. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely not. I was checking um, who the devs are, and it is Bandai Namco. I was like, I wonder if it's published by them. No, it's it's and it's developed. By you them. should give it a shot, friend. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it might be your thing. This might be my bullshit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool time. style. Oh, sorry. Shit. No, uh, that's okay. Finish your incredibly important thought. I was just gonna say, has a cool style to it. <laughs> and that's it, it does. It does. I, it does. Look I like cool. the color. Um, people should give it a, like it's free. It's it yeah. take you like. 20 minutes to run through one of the games and like I really liked that boss fight and like I ran through one and then I did the other and like the second time I kind of understood the systems and that was much more satisfying quick time events okay what we got news we news got three articles here that are news related um, Dead by Daylight adds Resident Evil's... Oh, cool. Jill Leon Nemesis in this next chapter. That's deadly. This already has a that, Silent Hill cast as well, doesn't yeah. it? That's cool. It's like they can all exist in this other game. Yeah. It like looks cool because uh, Nemesis can spawn zombies onto the map and stuff like that. Oh, that is really cool. So um, it looks like they're really, you know, shaking it up with it. I've never played Dead by Daylight, but when I hear like some of the mechanics, stuff like that, it does sound kind of awesome. Um, as part of the Sonic 30th celebration, Sonic the Fighters returns as a fully playable arcade game in Lost Judgment. Perfect. Great. That game is amazing. Um, it's very special. You know that is like a legit good fighting game. It's just its mechanics are really weird. You can really easily just trap someone in the corner and just wail on them. But there's like ways out of it as well. Is like there? it's actually a par- I watched a video a while ago where like that's actually like a legit pretty okay fighting game um i have a question on this because i saw this and are the models from that fighting game the ones in shenmue when you get the little gacha sonic figures because they look the same i think sonic the fighters is a sega saturn game okay but it's one it's a later treaty sega saturn game i think you might be right for non-mainline sonic cast okay so like it makes sense rocco the dancing bear being the dynamite. Being the dynamite. Who is a duck, I think. Yeah. Or is he a woodpecker? Something. Um, Bark the polar bear. That's another one. You can play it in Lost Judgment. I, I do love the arcade games in the Yakuza series and how they are kind of preserving older games in very interesting ways. Mm. Um, God of War 2 coming in 2022. Won't be PS5 exclusive. What? what? Really? Yeah. It's coming on the PS4 as well. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I th- I, yeah, I, I thought I, I read that and I was like, Kratos is going to be on the Xbox. He, he no, might. no, no. <laughs> it's going to be cross platform with the PlayStation 4, which. In, Disappointing. Which I'm kind of like, great for people who have. Like, you can't get a PS5 and maybe do you need one um so that's good but then also as someone who has invested in a ps5 you're kind of like 
Mm. Well, like, no, like, it is cool for people who can't get a PS5, but at the same time, like, this is exactly the kind of game that new consoles exist for. This is a flagship yeah. game. This and, is like, what it's... This is yeah. supposed to be... Like, in, in my mind, this was supposed to come out at Christmas, and it was, you know... First PlayStation, PlayStation yeah, 5. It was, it, was, it, was, it was the game. I guess you, that's going to be Horizon now. Do you think you are both in on this? No. Um, I liked a good bit of the first one. This is a thing that... A compliment I gave the first one was, it looks like concept art. But the more and more we get into kind of triple A and everything looks like concept art, I'm kind of like... It'd be really easy to get like... But that fucking turtle though. That turtle's cool. That turtle's great. It'd be really easy to get like a vista of like a overgrown forest from Uncharted, God of War, and Horizon and go which one is from which game. Yeah. And you, you'd be... You'd, you'd really have to look. We could make a game out of them all. You play as like a, a beard and <laughs> every now and beard. then he's like, Sally, Sally, come back. The beard's voiced by Ashley Johnson as well. Yep. Yeah, she, she's great. Yep. And occasionally a song will pop up and it'll say who who, who made the song. It'd be a really good uh, where scene where the beard finds like an acoustic guitar and it's all beat up. And he goes, you just like me. And then he plays a sad 90s pop song on it. Wonderwall, but like even sadder. Yeah. <laughs> and this game is called uh, Prestige, and it, it just says that on a white box with the PS5 logo, 100, 100 euro. Like it's just, and like there's guys, and they will like that's the hill they're dying on. Like you know, already on. I was talking about what are the bad guys called in this game. Uh, what about what about the lanterns? I I, I I I I had a funny joke, but I don't think it's funny, so I won't say it. Yeah, the lanterns is way funnier. <laughs> yeah, God of War 2 2022. Good, good, good for people. <laughs> Emails. I'm just going to say the name of our email address. I'm not even going to do a bit. It's not funny. It's not uh, funny. There's nothing funny about this. Uh, this is a serious fucking email address. Ask let's fight a boss at gmail.com. And if you don't have a serious email, piss off. Yeah. Go suck a fuck. <laughs> Neve, what do you got to say to people that don't have a serious email? A serious email to send us? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Just <laughs> Neve! <laughs> don't. Only bleep all that. <laughs> yeah, just bleep it and sit down and say, well, what did she say? <laughs> what did she say? I cursed you out. Something fierce. Okay. Ask that's for the boss at gmail.com. All right, all right. I got one. I was meant to read this one out a couple weeks ago, and now it's like it's a bit too late, but here we go. Okay. <laughs> This is from Pine1103. That's what they're called. Uh, band cross brand. Huh? Good evening, Joe Brr Knee. <laughs> Recently in the Giant Bombcast, I've learned that Corn has made a, a zero effort coffee brand replacement with their band name, <laughs> along with Deftones and custom beers that was immediately sold out. Damn it. What is your dream band cross food brand you think you could think of, and what type of food brand would Let's Fight a Boss be paired with in its eventual one, one, one million subscriber future? I want an energy drink. I like energy drinks because you can keep them forever as collector items. You can, they just stay in the can. Mm -hmm. So, wait, hang on, what's the question? What's our product? Okay, the Let's Fight a Boss product? Yeah. yeah. Um... Do you want like a gun? <laughs> Can I, oh no, do you know what, John? Guns are dangerous. <laughs> bullets. <laughs> and there's ones with like little N's, there's ones with little J's, there's ones with little B's. Yeah, like I would have but then some, there's one with the letter Y, because that's for you. I, I'd have some moral concerns about guns, but bullets are fine. Yeah, bullets, like, yeah. put them on a shelf. Yeah, totally. Um, I don't know. What about Let's Fight a Boss branded coffins? Yeah. It'd be cool if, like, the coating on the inside of the coffin is like a 3D printed image of you and you've got the arms out you're like here you go it's alright <laughs> and the front of the coffin is like a nice airbrushed picture of the three of them oh like real tastefully done yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we're all doing like kind of gang signs and you can just see us being lowered into the grave okay no food food um, do you guys want like some sort of crisps or chips depending on your region yeah, I could go with like 
like some kind of luxury potato chip. Okay, so I want like John potato chips, right? Okay. But then you've got two options of dips. You got sour cream and neve. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> and brine. And, and brine. And it's, <laughs> it's just, salt water. <laughs> it's just brine <laughs> kind of shrugging. <laughs> Look, it's what rhyme. No, it, it, it'll be some sort of spicy salsa, I guess. Not too spicy. I want like medium, like, you know. And was there a question about like what brand would we have crossover with something else? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Mine's kind of sad, but I'd like Lincoln Park cereal. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. I in the ends. I want System of a Down chocolate bars. Oh. I f I think they're the only ones who could get it right. I think they could tell her she's the fuck off yeah. and fix their fucking recipe. Nine Inch Nails, Mr. Freeze, but they're nine inches long. Oh, oh and that's they're like good. narrower at the that's bottom. Yeah. Good, yeah. I think it'd be cool if it said, like, you bring me closer to God, like, written on the <laughs> side. <laughs> oh, what else we got, Brian? All right, all right, all right. This is, this is another hypothetical. I love okay. these ones. I like hypotheticals. <laughs> this is from Monday, and it's John Moo 4, The Reveal. Mm. Hey, boss cast. Hope you're all doing well. I've always wanted to, don't question it, put you all in a messy scenario. No, no. This is this is a good scenario. I thought, we, I thought we talked about emails like this. If it's a good scenario, I will uh, encourage it. Okay. If it's a bad one, discouraged. Okay, I have full faith. Neil and Brian go to the studio where you. It's my apartment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where you, studio. <laughs> where you record the uh, the episode for the LFAB. <laughs> Upon upon getting into the studio, you see a dead John on the floor and two silhouettes standing. When they turn to see you, it's two other Johns. Brian then picks up the dead John that was a clone. John and the other two Johns, one is standing, okay. one is fake. So, Wait, one is standing and one is fake? <laughs> look, so much... <laughs> I got the wrong with me. <laughs> one is one is fake, one is real. Okay. Okay, so... There's a dead John, there's a real John, and a fake John. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Neve gives them 50 seconds to prove which John is the real John, or she'll shoot. John... No, Neve would just be like, there's no time, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she'd make them stand together so she only just use one bullet. <laughs> gotta, gotta be economical about it. That's, that's, a, that's our brand. Yeah. <laughs> okay, John, what would you do to prove you're the real John? Okay, but is that assuming that, like, my clone doesn't have intimate knowledge? They should, shouldn't they? Hmm. Or, or is this a clone, or is this just a very good doppelganger? Oh, okay, it's it a has good to doppelganger. Be a doppelganger. Yeah, we're gonna say it's okay. doppelganger. Okay, yeah. well, I think I would have to reveal, like... I'd have to think of what Neve and Brian... Okay, I would just look at Brian, and I would just say, don't point the blame finger at me. You could say that, or you could say... I'll tell you what happened in London. Okay, my gun is still focused. Okay, uh, Neve. <laughs> like this means nothing to how, me. How do I? Okay, Neve. Has there not been something really like fucked up, <laughs> like intimately fucked up? Neve, I really liked that movie that both Sarah Michelle Gellar and The Rock were in. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a lie. I know you hate it. I don't. I do like that movie. <laughs> I know. I'm joking. It's weird and fun. <laughs> Satland Tales. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you bring up Satland Tales, I'll let yeah. you live. Yeah. So, yeah. You're off the hook. Yeah. Okay. We got one One more. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one is from Baxter. That was hard because I also had to keep it not annoying because I feel like... I feel like... Far too personal. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was a difficult line okay, to walk. Okay. The blame finger, but also that book we were going to write and also looks like they're pulling time from the walls. Look, 2009 was a weird time, Neil. <laughs> Brian, you're not allowed to bring up that book. You brought it up before, and there was shit I could have brought up, and I fucking didn't, because I'm a good friend, unlike you. Remember chapter three? Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm all pissed now. <laughs> Brian's chapter. a little rat fuck. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, okay. I am. Okay, this one's from Baxter. What character do you think has the best teeth? Teeth. Teeth. Okay. I'm the street sharks. That's a good answer, but just... Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. I'm talking the kind of chompers that make you want to shrink down and climb them like mountains. So yeah, street sharks. Is the teeth fetish a thing? 
Oh, this is just Surely something has to. Yeah. Oh no, no, Neve, that totally is. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm fairly sure I know someone with a tooth fetish, and I've never asked her about it, but I'm nearly sure. Okay. There can be proof of their fabulous fangs, or they can just use. You can use the power of imagination. Example. Well, I know his breath is big, nasty. Wario has some alluring, pearly whites. I was in that thinking mouth. Wario. Uh, yeah. So for me, it's actually Donkey Kong. So Donkey Kong's <laughs> model, right? <laughs> comes in two type of teeth. Oh, teeth. That, that broke me. <laughs> oh, she's gone. Wow. <laughs> I just love that you were ready right <laughs> Look, this it is... It has to be Donkey Kong. This is something I think about at least twice a week. Okay? Donkey Kong has two models at the moment uh, in, in contemporary Nintendo media. Paraphernalia. <laughs> so... In Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, he has a really, really detailed model with like proper fur texture, and he has like chiclets, like individually modeled teeth, and they're great. But when we're talking about the Mario sports games, like Mario Tennis, when when Donkey Kong smiles in those games, it looks like a cash register tail, and it's fucking hilarious. And I don't know why, but I just like, I can hear those teeth going like. Ka-ching! And for that, I'm just oddly fascinated by them. You know who draws teeth super well? Who? My fucking god, the guy who writes Dragon Ball. I can't. Akira, Akira Toriyama. Toriyama. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I complete. I went through like Akira Kurosawa, Akira Yamaoka. <laughs> I went through all the Akiras, but um, he, you know, he draws good yeah, teeth. He, he draws like big, chunky, round teeth. Yes, he does. And I think, I, I think there's some really good drawings of Majin Buu's teeth. I like, I like the teeth that Oda does as well in One Piece because they're never symmetrical. It's always like they have a middle tooth. Yeah. They don't have two front teeth. They have one front tooth. Oh, there's a lot of good teeth in One Piece. Yeah, I I, I, I really love asymmetrical teeth in cartoon characters. Neve. And the continuity is all over the place. I honestly haven't thought about Which of your vampires teeth. do you want to pick? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, who in Star Wars has the best teeth? Hayden's got a good smile. He does. He doesn't use it often. I kind of... My, my, my mind went straight to the Yakuza series because... The creator has such good teeth that I presume that Kiryu has nice teeth. He does? Is that a thing? I mean, Kiryu has nice everything. Like, yeah. He's, he's a 10 top to toe. He smiles sometimes. I, I, I wait for a Majima smile. Like, that is a... I've never just... seen Kiryu do a tooth smile. He he does for the... Does, does, doesn't he for selfie mode? Or am I... No, he... You can make him do one for selfie mode. He That's just does a mouth it. smile? Yeah. Like the corners of his mouth go up like a couple of degrees. Okay, so not video game characters. Like, let, let's move into... Live action. Are, are, are there any actors? Uh, I, I like. Uh, Wal- are there any actors Wal- with teeth? Walton Goggins. <laughs> no, no, but like big teeth. Walton Goggins has amazing teeth. Well, you can't just fucking make up actors. Oh, he, Walter, Walton you know who, You know who I think has good good Goggins. teeth? A uh, Scrilly McPoogle pants. Like that's, <laughs> Walton Goggins is a real man, John. I'm going to show you a man with a fucking just Scroggins. <laughs> John, look at this man's teeth and tell me he's not a fucking charmer. Oh my god, that is an incredible pair of teeth. <laughs> wow, those are big teeth. Yeah. Neve, can this also be part of it? <laughs> You're fine, you have to send that to me because I'm going to forget that. I will, I, 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 I've got the other one saved Who too. has good teeth? Google will tell me. <laughs> Celebrity Peter. Walton Goggins got amazing teeth. Yeah, and, and yeah, Street Yeah, so does Scroggles McPoogle Pants. Yeah. We, uh, we got time for one more. We do. Neva, you're uh, doing a teeth deep dive. Julia Roberts does have good she teeth. She does have good yeah. teeth. Yeah. See now that you see, I need I need a refresher. Wow, it's just like who has good teeth, and it just says one Julia Roberts, and then there's no one else after. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'll do one more quick question. Is that okay? Yeah. Go for it. This is from Adam. It says hello to John, Nev, Brian, and uh, oh, and also the subject is Nintendo versus Sega. Okay, as you were all kids in the 90s, how do you know that? That's private. <laughs> Madonna, I like her little gap in her very teeth. Very good. It's very yeah. cute. There we go. Hers and Tyler's, I, 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 I like a good gap. Who was your one in Orange is the New Black? She had a gap in her teeth as well. She played Crazy Eyes. Suzanne. Oh, yes. I can't remember her name. She's amazing. She's got, I love her smile. Okay, as you were all kids in the 90s, were you more Nintendo kids or Sega kids? Sega. We had a Sega Mega Drive. Never had a Nintendo. It's so a part of your personality. It re- mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I had a SNES growing up, so I was a Nintendo kid. It's Nintendo all the way. Yeah, and although that, I did really like Sega. Yeah, I, I I I was jealous of not being able to play Sonic. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. But then you know what? If you're patient, and you get the GameCube, you get to play some Sonic. You'll win that war eventually. <laughs> yeah. Just gotta sit back, relax, and uh, you know, gamers never lose. Thank you, Adam. Patreon shoutouts. Okay. You guys know I like to make a little bit of a pitch for the Patreon every now and then. Oh, yeah. And I'm not going to do that this week. Instead, I'm just going to drop a fact. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be cold. It's going to get into the dark, seedy underbelly of podcast business. We have never asked you to buy a loot crate. It's true. Now, listen. I am sworn to secrecy on the business dealings of this podcast. And I can't confirm or deny anything. But all I'm going to say is there may have been a time when business people crawled out of the ashes of the Loot Crate crate Company and they came to us and they said, let's fight a boss. Let's fight a boss, please. We need this. Please take our sponsorship. And they raised their coin to us in bloody hands and we looked down at them and we said, no, with grins like lunatics and eyes like fire. We did not want their blood money. We would not try and do that to you. Because we respect you. Hell, we might even love you. We certainly depend on you. Patreon.com forward slash LFAP. Brian, what's that? Patreon.com forward slash L F A B. <laughs> so, like, you got you guys can't <laughs> confirm what I just said, but do you want to deny it? Do either of you want to deny that that happened? Hey, we're not here to shill <laughs> some uh, mid tier uh, wireless earbuds, just saying. <laughs> Keep LFAB ad free. Mm-hmm. Ad free since ninety three. Just saying. That's how long this podcast has Unless been. Unless someone came to us like with enough money, in which case we would immediately take it. Yeah. Oh yeah, just without doubt, like yeah. just in a fucking second. Like I, I need but, money to bring the back the street sharks. I but un- but until that moment comes, we are a principled podcast. We have standards. Let's see how, how far they take us. Yep, hundred percent. But do please join us on this financial journey of yep. our Patreon. Um. Also, just want to say, Discord. Uh, I feel like I usually have a lot of positive things to say about the Discord. Recently, you little fucking shits, you know what you did. <laughs> they made the best fucking I am going gift. To, I'm going to find the person who fucking did that. <laughs> have, I got, I'm, I'm, oh I'm, no, I'm, I've seen it, the one where they're, it's rubbing yeah. baby John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, ev- everyone agreed that that wasn't funny and that it wasn't appropriate. I think it's really funny. And, um, um, the person who I'm did it, I know who it is. You, you're getting get banned. Like you're getting, as soon as I can convince one of the other mod- mod- modders to ban you, you're gone. You're done. I love that all the mods on the Discord like know the nameless thing as a whole fucking joke and It's not a joke. It's a collection of like minded individuals sharing business advice. It seems like they're just sharing like a little sticker in there a whole to- a whole bunch. Well, you're not allowed in there, so you would never know. I know I'm allowed in there because no, I'm not. really I'm really cool. Brian. I- I'd like to end this podcast now. Uh, also there's also a place called Brian's GameCube Corner, which then was called we're going to, John renamed it, but then it got renamed to Biscuits GameCube Corner. I renamed it something really funny. It was like, I don't think this channel is very good. Wouldn't go here, to be honest. And then I wrote John is, or no, Brian is Baron John. John's not Baron Brian. Um, you know he said it? You know he said it? And one day you're going to slip up and you're going to fucking say it. Someday Brian. I'm going to slip up and that day is the day I die in your arms. <laughs> oh my God. So how do you feel about that, That was that, beautiful. John? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you to our generous patrons. Um, every time we get an email that we have a new one, I go, oh, really? <laughs> like, Are you every fucking time. serious? <laughs> wow. For real, my dude? <laughs> and um, also, you can get, you can do something incredible with Patreon. You can send a little message to yourself in the future. <laughs> Take scan. Scene. 
seen Revivalism Zealot. This is coming at us um, from the merry year of 2019. Broke, I have no mouth and I must scream. Woke, I have a mouth and I ice cream. That's good. I like that. That ice, made me happy. Ice cream is pretty good. I'll take this next one because it's a big one. Uh, this is from JT. TJ. G? JTTG. There you go. And you're the dyslexic one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last night I watched Redline, the most visually incredible and hype as shit anime film I've ever seen. If you're listening to this, please go watch Redline. It's a real shame there isn't an almost 15 minute long video on YouTube that does a better job of recommending. Yeah, it's, it's a shame there's no YouTube video like that. Yeah, no. I'm not a fan of Redline personally. Neve? Uh, this one is from Mobo. Mobo is a really good name. John wouldn't let me pay for his signature at QCon, so I signed up for Patreon instead. You little shit. You got around the system. Uh, just so you know, QCon is an anime convention in Northern Ireland. It's nothing to do with QAnon or anything. Like, like it's a, it's <laughs> oh, I never thought. Ooh. No, because cause, cause in that QAnon documentary, there is a QAnon convention called QCon. And I was like, oh, no. And I was like, no. Oh, and QCon's such a good convention. Yeah. QCon is a really lovely anime convention that's like 25 years old. It's so friendly. Everyone there is so lovely. Yeah, that's a good fucking vibe. Yeah. Um, QCon, uh, hopefully it's back someday. Also, if if I'm ever, ever at a point where I'm asking people to like pay for autographs, I do want one of you to just put me down at that stage. Just, that's it. Let John die in your arms. Like, that's his moment. Yeah. Loot drop. Okay, I shall go first here. <laughs> guys, I have just been having a time looking into Dreamworld. Um, I sent you guys the link for this. It yes. is a Kickstarter, and it is such an amazing Kickstarter because it's from one of these just fucking assholes who... he He's, he's the kind of guy who has, like, a YouTube voice in real life. <laughs> um, he is just incredible. And, it, okay, it's called Kickstarter. It's called um, Dreamworld. <laughs> The last game you'll ever need. I can't and believe that's the like I, synopsis. I know, I know. And then he's like, he's like, I want to make this game. Okay, well, no, he goes, he starts off and he's like, I wanted to, you know, I have a great project. I'm so excited. And there's like, you know, fucking whatever inspirational music in the background. And then he's like, um, you know, I made this game and the music stops after my fiance left me. And he's such a fucking asshole. And then he goes on, he's like, Oh, so me and my buddy, we got together and it's like, why don't we make that game that we've always wanted to make? Every genre, every type of game, all in one. Some MMOs have hundreds of players. This is going to have millions all playing online at once at the same time. And it's like, oh my God, you're like a crazy fucking marketing person. You've never played a video game and you don't understand how video games work. Because if you and your buddy could make a server that could hold a million people, the fucking, you know, World of Warcraft would have done that so long ago. And it's it's just the kind of video you watch it and it's like, this is so stupid. But then it gets so much better because his fiance also posted a video about him, how he is a basically just a complete fucking loser who bought her a fake engagement ring and then tried to pretend that the ring shop sold him a bad ring and that the person who sold it to him got fired before eventually he was like, no, it was fake. I bought you a fake ring. And it's just... Do you ever just and and the alpha of it just released and it's such a piece of shit and everything is store bought assets and do you ever just like see a a little weird drama hole and you just watch so many videos about it and it's just like this just feels so snuggly that's do, where I'm at with Dream World. Do you want to link the Kickstarter and maybe the fian the the, the ex fiance video? Is that your kind of yeah yeah? You know what? I'll just drink. I'll just link the ex fiance video. She seems she, she seems fine. Yeah, and that's all you need. You should check this out. Um, my loot drop, given the month that's in it, it's Pride Month. So happy Pride to all my... Uh, happy Pride, everybody. LGBT cuties happy out pride, there. Happy Pride, little guys. This is a lesbian web comic called Hard Lacquer. 
and it's by Amelia Elor, and you can find it on Tapas. It's uh, and on Tumblr, and it is um, a free to read web comic. But you can also support her on Patreon and get pages early. It is a beautiful, beautifully drawn comic. The color work in this is absolutely amazing, and it's just so beautifully stylized. It's lesbian spies, and it's just a really good, fun time, and I really, really enjoy it. Go check out a fun lesbian webcomic. Will they or won't they? Doesn't matter. They're lesbians. Yeah. They already have. <laughs> <laughs> they would. Yeah. There's like there's loads of butch characters in this, and there's just such few butch characters in lesbian media and just media in general. So I really appreciate this comic and it's just it's just gorgeous. Um, so please check it out. Uh, then for me I have a YouTube channel called Hot Cider. Um he seems to have kind of started making videos in the last year or so, and they're all pretty interesting. This one is on Donkey Kong 94. My next loot drop is also going to be on Donkey Kong. I'm really feeling Donkey Kong. I'm just real into monkeys at the moment. Just think they're fucking brilliant. Do you think you're done with frogs? Yeah, I was just going to ask. Frogs are for the winter. Monkeys are for the summer. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Don't know the logic there, but it, it does make sense if you think about it. I'm real into primates at the moment. I just think monkeys, gorillas, all kinds of ape. Fantastic. This is just a video on Donkey Kong 94. But what I like about this video is that the aspect ratio is that of a Game Boy. So it's in a little box and the game, the, the, the footage of the game is presented pixel perfect. I like it when people mess with aspect ratios in videos. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, the same guy, Hot Cider, he has a video on Wario likes and it kind of just talks about Wario style oh, platformers. Oh, I, I put this in my watch later recently. Yeah. Uh, he's, 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 I, I, I'm very curious to see where this channel goes. He's got some good videos under his belt. Can't wait to see. I, I'm, I'm subbed now. Let's see what they got. Cool. That's it. We're done. Bye. <laughs>